Uh, thank you for your patience. We're back. Uh, voted to come out of executive session. <coughs> uh, tentative resolution has been reached between uh, Miss Lewis of the Housing Authority and the board, subjects, uh, subject to the terms uh, of that resolution being finalized. And we will attempt to, to have a public statement uh, as soon as possible. And we will notify the the media as soon as uh, it's been finalized and we can legally release it. So again, thank you for your patience. <coughs> uh, next item. Number five. I uh, need a motion to call it. Uh, well, we did walk in. Any walk-ins? None. Uh, except resignations, the Animal Control Board in the Cable Television Committee. Motion? Please. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the resignation of Joan Hopkins from the Animal Control Board? Do you want to do them separately or together? Together? Yeah, together, why not? And the resignation of Kathleen Meeker from the Cable Television Committee. And further, the Board thank Ms. Hopkins and Ms. Meeker for their volunteering their time and their expertise to these groups. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. I see Kathy right there. Kathy, thank you very much for all your help on that committee. It was very, very helpful. Uh, meet applicants of the Cable Television Committee, Water Resource Committee, and the Library Board of Trustees. Let's take Cable Television Committee first. Someone? Yes, there we go. Thank you. Why don't you come up and say hello. Some of us know who you are, but... Uh, Sit, sit down. <coughs> Brief statement. Um, I'm Peter Struzero. I'm the head of teen services at the Situate Town Library. And I just wanted to st hopefully try to step step in for uh, Mrs. Meeker and keeping with uh, a library a library person on board. Um, in my, I've been in the position for about a year in town and uh, moved to town about six months ago trying to get more active in the community and I thought it was a good opportunity. Thank you. Questions from the board? Um, are you related to the Strazeros that have been down? I, I think uh, I, it's I, a, often, not just. It's for a, a distant year. relation, but I, I am, yeah. Okay. The dentists. Yes. Yes. Well, I was pleased to see that you have a. You were a member of the Methuen Cable Access. I team. was, yeah. I was. I served as the teen librarian in Methuen as well, and we did constant programs for the kids, and we worked back and forth with Meth Methuen uh, Cable Access. So at at one point, I joined that group as well. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be making, we'll do the, the uh, interviews, if you call on that now, and then we'll make the appointments later on tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thanks. in. And no need to stay around for the whole meeting either. More than welcome to, if, you, <laughs> if you'd like. But uh, Water Resource Committee. Yep, Mark, how are you? Well, how are you? Good, thank you. <coughs> I know you've served on boards before, but if you just... Sure. Uh, Mark Curran, Southern Man Hill Road. Uh, lived there with my wife, Donna. I've been here for about 20 years. Um, previously served a term on the Water Resources Committee and was also on the Conservation Committee previously. Questions? Comments? Mark, thank you. I was delighted to see Mark throw his application in again. He, as he said, he was on the committee, then took a year or two off, and uh, this is good stuff. Glad to be back. And the Library Board of Trustees, Nancy. Hi, I'm Nancy Blumen Verseckis. I um, have lived in Situate for uh, about 35 years now. Served on the Library Trustees for eight years from 1999 to 2008. Asked if I would fill in the position that's currently open, and it's kind of interesting to see that what we had talked about four years ago is now coming to fruition. So I look forward to doing that. Comments? Right? No. Nancy, thank you. Thank you. Again, we'll make these appointments later on in the agenda. Thank you all for coming in, and again to all the applicants. Do we have a Nope. Yeah, number seven. 
Uh. Kathy, are you being appointed for anything? No, but there's a joint vote that's supposed to take. Oh, right. It's number seven. Okay. Okay, so me. We'll get to that. Give us one second. Go ahead, gentlemen. Want me to do the resignation? Yeah, do the resignation. Okay. Um, also, we have a, a letter of res resignation um, from Elise Fendel. I'd like to inform you that I'm resigning from my position of the Library Trustees, effective July 28th. Um, and again, we want to thank her for serving, and um, we'll get a, a letter out to that effect, Kim? Yes. Great. Thank have you very much. Have we moved to accept that resignation at a previous meeting, or do we need to move that now? It's an elected position, so I don't believe the board needs to accept uh, a resignation formally, but I just want you to see the Understood. letter of resignation yep. so that you can go forward with a joint yep. No, I just wanted to double check because before we appointed somebody, I wanted to make sure that it was actually vacant. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it appears that that uh, one of the uh, positions that we just interviewed for uh, needs a joint vote of the trustees as well as the board. And rather than keep the trustees here till midnight, uh, why don't we go to number seven now, if we could? and make that joint vote now. If the chairman of the trustees will come up, just to thank you. And make the nomination. Mariella Gaziano, if you could make a nomination. Um, uh, any comments you'd like to make? We'd like to nominate Nancy Verseckis, um as a member of the Board of Trustees at the library and welcome her aboard. Kim, we'll have a roll call vote of the trustees first and then us. Is that the? Probably need a second from somebody on the. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Second by Kevin Carlton. Do you want me to do the. Actually, do you mind listing off your members? I don't have a. No, nope, that's fine. Um, Lee Vickers. Just say aye. Kevin Carlton. Um, I can't include Nancy. <laughs> um, Carol S Sullivan Hanley. Aye. And Chris Maracci. Aye. There he is. And yourself. And myself, Mary Ellen Gaziano. Aye. 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 Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Congratulations. It seems to be unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Did we actually do the motion? Hmm? Good luck. Did we read the motion? Okay. Oh, we took a vote. I'm not sure. We, we didn't read the exact Did we re motion. Should we read the exact motion? She, she moved. She made the motion. She, she, just she made moved. the motion. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, number eight. Discussion one day wine and malt beverage license, uh, William Fuller from the uh, Inley School, November 2nd and 3rd, benefit for the homes for our troops. If you would, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bill Fuller, and I own the bartending service of New England. Uh, my company is working with the Plymouth and South Shore Association of Realtors for a fundraiser for two days, excuse me, for two days at the Inley School. It's a fundraiser for homes for our troops. They've contracted with our company, and we've made application for a special one-day beer and malt license with your town. This is the first time I've been before this board. Thank you. Uh, discussion from the board? Just tell me a little bit about what, what does your company actually do? Do you, do you come and host the party or serve? That's correct. We, host, we provide the tip certified and insured bartenders. We make all the arrangements with the wholesalers for the product delivery. Uh, we handle the transportation of the delivery and taking it away from the property at the end of the events. We've been doing this since 1992, and this is the first time I've been to situate, so it's and nice to be here. Have you had any violations the last three years? No, none, sir. Okay. And the event is on, I guess, on, on your November 2nd. And November 3rd. And the 3rd. Correct. So tell, do you know anything about the event itself? 
It's the second annual, it's a talent show that the, this group of realtors puts on. I heard it's quite entertaining. They were in Middleborough last year, and that's how they came upon my company. That's where we're based out of. And so um, this is the second event. They're expecting a couple hundred people on each night. I'd give you a better estimate probably next year with something to go mm -hmm. by, but it sounds like it's going to be a good time. And it's going to be held right at the Emily School? That's correct. Six to ten. Six to right. ten. Motion. Take a motion. Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a one-day uh, wine and malt beverage license to William Fuller, the Bartending Service of New England, LLC, for a fundraiser event taking place at the Inley School at 45 Watch Hill Drive, situate on Friday, November 2nd and Saturday, November 3rd, 2012, from 6 p.m. until 10 p.m. each evening. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I don't know if you, I think you mentioned it, but just, just so you know, the proceeds from this event go to Homes for Our Troops. Right. So that's the, the fundraiser that the, that the event is uh, supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, discussion of a, uh, the, round, the Route 3 roundabout landscape plan, Kennedy Country Gardens and uh, Jim Cantwell, I think, is scheduled to be here. I don't know if he is. Yes, Chairman, I, he, I told him to be here and asked him if he would be here at 7.30. We're a little late. You're doing such a good job. You're ahead of the schedule. So would you like to move this back a little further? A couple items more? Take care of some other business? Sure. Or we can proceed without him? Well, number 10 has been canceled. Uh, you can do your 7.30 if you want to reverse the order. Pardon? Yeah. The inter both candidates here? One is here. So One is here. That's uh, Parlor, I think, right? Yes. Why don't we bring Parlor in and uh, okay. moving to. So, should we first note that number item oh, 10? Hold, has on, been hold on, wait. The agenda says that we're going to do that at 7 30. Let's start now. That's okay. Yeah, okay. why don't why don't we out? Uh, yeah. Jim will oh, come oh, in. We'll, we'll whoa, 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 whoa. No. Not, why don't you get back in the board? Piers the board wants to do Al now and no, no I'm okay holding off Al I just the interview says it's 730 and so I want to make sure that that's okay to deviate from that the agenda that would be fine I mean just okay just well while it. Al's up there we could do number 12 it's the betterment for the road why don't we do that let's do 12 make it even more all right number 12 12 betterment Maybe we can be slow enough that you don't get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, by that time, it might be 7.30, we'll have to... Except you're number 12 first. Oh, we're number 12? 12. Yeah, we'll do that's the... That's you, Will. Let's do the, the betterment for the... Uh, oh, my number 12. Yeah. Please. Thank you. There are three of us here tonight, as you can see, myself, Kathy Joyce, and Jenny Newcomb from the Old Mouth uh, Road subdivision area. Uh, and we're here to talk about a program that we uh, voted on and at <coughs> a special town meeting in October of 2011 called the Private Way Repair Program. Uh, Old Mouth Road has stepped forward, uh, the residents in that area, and said they would like to move into this program and let me explain just briefly how this program works. For parts of town, uh, for, a, for a road or a group of roads where, we, where they are designated, not yet designated as public ways, but are private ways, and where the residents are fine with leaving those as private ways, and perhaps even there's no way move, to move forward to become a public way because of the type of road or the expenses involved, there's an alternative program available, which is called the Private Way Repair Program. This is a program whereby residents get together, petition the DPW for uh, a program to be put together that will provide maintenance of the road over five years. In working with the residents, then we came up with a program that would meet uh, what the residents would like to see for the roads in their area in terms of the degree of maintenance. Um, a price has been placed upon that. This is a program that will end up costing the residents through a betterment, 
uh, and and then by the way, then the then the maintenance is paid for by a betterment on the properties in the in the affected area. Uh, the particular program that was put together for Old Mouth Road uh, is one that will cost the residents approximately $125 per year. They'll pay that over five years. The DPW will then, with them, uh, an agreement, manage a contractor who will come in and four times a year regrade and dress the road and keep it in top-notch shape for them. So this is a program that we've done where private ways cannot or do not choose to become forward as public ways. And we have many private ways like this. So I, I have to say that uh, Old Mouth Road and particularly these two community leaders here are, are more or less my poster child for this program because um, after quite a bit of discussion decided that this is what they'd like to do and they've worked to get 65% um, of the residents on the street have signed up for this program and recognize this is a difficult task to do in that area because many of the residents are, are non-resident in the winter time so it's a matter of trying to catch people. Um, so with that we're here to answer your questions. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, just one point is that, you know, when we passed this at, at town meeting, it was kind of thought that it would it actually be a, a fix to a road, not really a maintenance program to a road. So I never had heard of, you know, th just so people understand, this is a three time per year grading and repair work to the road, whereas in the past, I think we even did one where we just went in, we fixed the road one time, it was a $100,000 fix, the betterment was assessed for 20 years and it went away. Right. So this is really an ongoing, so we're gonna make sure that the roads are maintained on a regular basis, yeah. three times a year. And and what is the time period? Excuse me, may I interrupt yeah. you? You yeah. said four times a year. Four, four times, times a year. year. We yeah. really Maybe do I need it every yeah. three months. And the roads are dirt. They're not paved roads. No, no, I understand that, but. Um, the difference with the, with the fix the road, the $100,000 fix is that this is a particular area where paving would not be allowed because it's uh, it's on right. a barrier reef so we, we had in it's been a several year process we've looked at all the alternatives about moving to forward to private for, for private to public <clears throat> if they moved to public what would that mean uh, what could be done to to bring it up to <coughs> a standard uh, but and we worked with the DEP and Conservation Commission and and we're at the point where there's we cannot do something that's permanent this, these will be right uh, gravel type roads forever gravel and some sand roads forever but they still need maintenance uh, because they're they get rutted and what happens is the town actually does the work they do it at the, the quality level that the town wants and they well they contract it out but they they, contract they, out, right. they are the ones that are are right. managing the process as opposed yes. to homeowners that either yes. aren't there or they're not experts in that right. area and it is a, a five-year period that the commitment is for doing this. Yes, this and then better. at the end of five years, we can, can recalculate. See how it goes and then come um, back and see. That's correct. The, yeah, I can't think of what I was going to say. We looked at uh, trying to go for a full-blown fix and uh, this ongoing maintenance is what's best for the area. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. The There's actually a state law that uh, they could do this on their own. So what we're doing is providing a service, a little level of service, uh, in that uh, residents can, on a road, three residents on a road may band together and establish a, uh, have a meeting, have a uh, develop a program and require all to pay. So this is not just something we invented, this is actually a state law, uh, goes back probably 120 years. Uh, what we're providing is a service of we'll do some help them with the oversight they they'll have a committee that will make sure that they're getting what we all agree to um, and then uh, the town through the tax rolls through betterment will collect the funds to do this work the only other question I had is I saw 65 you have to have at least 65 percent well you have to have three people only but, three people so we, they've, we've set the bar that at least you know well over 50 percent of the people should participate with should want to participate yeah. it would be 37 tax payers right but two are private parking lots okay right Rick did you have I do um, thank you mr. chair uh, you've mentioned and you say in your documents you've gone before the Conservation Commission you have an orders of conditions were those were there's a lot of stuff required by Conservation Commission or is it pretty straightforward no I had filed notice of intents oh probably a year, year and a half ago 
okay yeah. and they were approved by DEP I have an order of conditions um, I have a DEP number posted on this poll okay and <coughs> have been maintaining the roads right along but okay. I'm tired of pounding on Jewels asking for money so by supplementing gotcha so the other question I had then is I'm a little confused as to who's going to be overseeing this is the clerk of the works going to be a DPW person or is it going to be one of them Bills will be submitted to the town. The town yep. will make sure the work was done. Okay. And uh, the, the town will be uh, issuing the betterment, so the, chain, the money will come into the town. Um, the, uh, co the committee will just be sure that they're getting what the whole program was set up to go do, so that you know the town doesn't use the money on another road down the way, or we don't forget to do it. You That's know, a it's, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but there will be, so the clerk of the works overseeing is DPW person? Yes. Right. Okay. Thanks. Go on. Um, just, ladies, welcome. Uh, question I have is, out of the remaining 35%, were there many people who were objecting to it specifically about this and complaining at all? or There's many people. This program is, we've started this almost three years ago now, three years in January. And there's consistently been people who want the road fixed but have chose not to contribute. So um, the 65 percent have basically picked up the tab for everybody, and we have supplemented the difference if need be for filings and hearings and whatever. I only ask that because down the road I would I'm potentially sure anticipate people complaining. Right, I'm sure the town and the town's going to have to take that issue. And, and I'm sure that the same people that didn't choose to participate right. in the past three years. What you're doing is great. Uh, I've talked to you before in the past two years ago about this and uh, you've come to the point where this is a great opportunity not just for the old mouth but also for other roads which gets me to Al potentially if more and more roads or people who live on these private roads uh, come under this is is it potential that these costs that you're projecting now could potentially go down I mean if we're going to contract it out sub it out is it something that maybe long term if we get more and more roads that we can actually do it within house and lo lower the cost we don't have the proper equipment for this particular right. type of grading, but um, that's the move that we go in. I think the uh, depends on the area. Uh, this area is fairly um, isolated from some of the other areas. If, if many roads on Palmer Rock wanted to go this way, however, then it, obviously there's an easier way to. Is it primarily with a grader that you're going to be using to grade it and then put down the material and then spread it out and then compact it? Right. So <laughs> potentially with all. <coughs> the gentleman that's we been doing it has been grading it with what's there. Yeah. He said there's really no need to add fill, which was right. one of the biggest objections from uh, DEP. conservation and DEP. and DEP. So they've been grading it up really well and then leveling it and then hitting it with a roller. The last time he did not, he didn't feel it was necessary, but the time before he did. Right. And it's lasted the longest in a very long time. Right. So right. Um, the reason why I say is because you're you're really, as you say, the poster child for future and we have a number of private roads with so many residents that live on it and if it's dealing with a greater and a potential compactor, I mean it's something that the DEP might consider in the future, providing it's economical to We've actually used the same contractor. Paint. He belongs to a big firm in Hanover. Okay, he has consistently done the roads, been very agreeable. We've negotiated a price with him, and he's done a wonderful job for us. We Thank I do have one question, and I don't know if they all of you. Down the road, we do need some kind of major repair because of the erosion problem right. as well. There is one section that's eroding <laughs> along our riverfronts. And that's something we'd like the town to help us come to. If we have to end up paying for it ourselves, it's very, very, very expensive. Maybe the town could work something out and pay part of it or help us get to that because it's going to end our access if the erosion continues. It's right where the... It's right along the river, river bank. I'm sure Al will be more than willing to... Uh, Al has seen it. He knows. And we met with conservation. This, this right. It's about a five-year process to get the uh, DEP to agree to, to basically armor the bank, but it's what was done underneath the bridges of the right. back. So it's 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 on the horizon. It's something to look at. John? Motion, Mr. Chair. Oh, Pardon, just motion. No. Oh, just sorry. Question. <coughs> you said when I talked to you earlier, Al. So if all the people aren't on board with this they're going to have to pay, unlike before when these residents, just want to yes. be clear, everyone pays, law, it right. goes on their tax bill like a like a water bill or something right. like that. 
And just reiterate, it's one hundred and twenty-five dollars a year. Right. So right. it's not a mm -hmm. well enormous amount that some of the other betterments have been. Mm -hmm. uh, good. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to adopt orders, plans, and estimates for the assessments of betterments for the purpose of making annual repairs to Old Mouth Road, Oceanfront Street, Court Street, Dreamway, Caesar Way, and a section of River Street from Alden to Old Mouth, not to exceed $22,000 over five years. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Good luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with it. Uh, you going to do the contractor? 12A. That's different. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Al, you can stay up there. It's now 7.30 or shortly thereafter. We, uh, we had an earlier number presentation, nine. number nine, a Route 3A roundabout landscape plan. Uh, I we also have a 730 interviews, treasure collector's position. Uh, I think we're going to have to do the treasurer's collector's position since that's a schedule at 730, and then we'll go back to the roundabout. And I apologize to the roundabout people, but that's what happened. Okay. Um, what we're going to do, we will take the, uh, we have two candidates for treasurer uh, this evening. What we'll do is take them alphabetically. Uh, Pam Avatabli is here. And if Pam would come up and introduce herself to the board. Uh, I know Pam is being the assistant. Hi, Pam. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Pam, good to see you again. Hi, Pam. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, I'm sure there. It's nice to meet you. Pam, if you just take a chair at the table there. Uh, Pam is... Uh, well, she'll tell you she's the assistant treasurer in, in, in Duxbury, but I'll give you Pam an opportunity to give the board some of your background or anything you'd like to say. And, and uh, Is the other, before we go, is the other interviewee in here? Yes, she's out in the hall. Okay, yeah, We're not great. Okay, yes, I've worked at the town of Duxbury. It was a year this past February as the assistant treasurer. Um, before Duxbury, I was in Norwell. Um, I have a son that was giving me a hard time, so I quit a very professional job. I have an accounting background, so I decided to stay home, and I saw this ad in the paper for a municipality in Norwell part-time account payable administrator. So I took it. I was there a little while. The assistant town accountant and the town accountant were having issues. So they gave me, the selectman gave me the uh, assistant town accountant job. Unfortunately, we, I couldn't keep it because of the, un the way the union works. The senior most qualified person had to get it, and that was a dispatcher. So I saw this full-time job in Duxbury come up as a treasurer. I thought, well, you know, accounting background, we'll go for it. So I went there, and uh, I love it. I think my boss knows I'm a little overly qualified for the job. He's given me a lot of his responsibilities. Although I'm an assistant treasurer, I do do a lot of the collection part of it also. Um, he's involved me in all aspects of the job. Um, I haven't, I've just started to get involved in some borrowing. Uh, I feel as though my accounting background has really pushed me so uh, to make it mesh. It's really been a great opportunity. Um, municipality government is definitely different than the private sector. Uh, I'm a Bentley graduate. I continue to go to Bentley. Um, I hope to have my PhD soon. Um, I have a couple classes left. But I'd like to come to Situate because I want to better myself. I want a higher position. Uh, I think now that I've had the background, I've completed two years of schooling at the Treasure Collector School. Uh, I hope to be certified soon. Unfortunately, the process is very slow. I'd love to try to take the test now and see if I could pass it, but that's not an issue. You have to go to school for at least six years before you can take the test. So that's pretty much where I stand now. 
Thank you. If the board has any questions, I'm sure they do. Uh, we thank you for applying, first of all. Um, and I'll open it up to the board. Any questions, comments? John? Um, welcome, thank first you. and foremost. Um, in your present position, how many people do you manage? I am the assistant treasurer, so I have one person that is that I supervise. When you were in the town of Norwell, what was how many people did you manage there? Uh, two others. And two the other reason why I'm asking is because obviously you're going to be managing a whole office, so I'm just right. trying to get a sense of like your experience with managing people and personnel. Yeah, in my in, in, in your private practice. Right, in the working. private sector, I was the accounts. Um, I was the manager controller for Signet Electronics, so I had 20 people under me at that point. Um, forgive me. How many years did you? How many? I worked there for about seven years. Seven years. Okay. Yeah, and that process was when my son was starting to give me a tough time. Challenges. Yes. That's why I always say. <laughs> and full time was my husband also works a, a lot of hours, and it was you know one of us had to make the sacrifice, and I decided to stay home with him. Uh, now, thankfully, he's 19 and. Um, signed up to go in the army November 16th here's hoping <laughs> it'll be the best thing for him and me too <laughs> <laughs> any other questions just uh, maybe I can tag it so just so I get the time frame right in in May of 06 is when is that when you were working for that electronic company yes and that's when you had more management responsibilities Correct. and then you started working part-time a couple of months after that Yes. 15 hours a week. You went to Norwell. Right. And you were uh, an interim town accountant. Right. Correct. Then you became the accounts payable manager in Norwell. And that's when you became the assistant treasurer of Duxbury after that. Yeah. In yeah. Norwell, for a short period of time, I, I worked part time. And then I was given the opportunity to be the assistant town accountant. Loved it. Um, was actually taught a lot got a involved a lot in the town. Uh, the selectmen actually went to bat for me against the union to try to get me to be able to stay full time. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, they went through the whole process and ended up losing the way the contract was. Noel has since changed their contract and they said it's because they lost me. So that's a little pat on the back. <laughs> well, you made the transition from the town accountant to the town treasurer, and here they're they're really two different roles. Oh yeah. So, they're, they're totally how did you do that transi How did that transition work, and how did you get the knowledge base from one to the other? Did you well, find that difficult, or what? I I really didn't find it difficult. I mean, I, I I certainly didn't step in and know what everything I was doing. Absolutely not. And it is a learning process, absolutely. But I think because of my background, and I catch on pretty quick. Um, my boss also spent a lot of time with me. He's been in the field for a long time. Um, at that time, too, he had a problem with the collector, so he was actually spending a lot of time with me, s teaching me both sides, both sides of the coin. I was, um, you know, I spend a lot of time, too, when I, I know you just met me, but because of my background, when I take on a responsibility, I really give it a uh, 100%. So I started with the manuals. I took a couple of classes on my own. Um, and I, I really, you know, w I think the counting background really helps, really helps. I mean, and y it's a little bit different on the treasurer's side, but not, not a heck of a lot different. Yeah. Well, municipal government so oh, accounting is yes. much different than, oh, than the private sector. Um, so who is the actual treasurer? I mean, through all the years, you've been the assistant, so you've had someone to kind of rely on for some expertise. Right. Obviously, stepping up to this position, mm -hmm. you would be the person that other people come to to look for the expertise. So that's, right. um, you know, that's obviously a big challenge for you. Um, who is the actual treasurer of Duxbury now? Tom Connolly is the treasurer now in Duxbury. And I think if you seriously ask him, I do a lot of what he does. Uh, I think he's given me more responsibilities because he knows that I like a challenge and I like to learn. So I'm constantly taking on new projects. And uh, so he's one. Of, is he one of your reference? Or one someone we could use as a reference for you? He's my boss. Okay. Yeah. I um. 
you can definitely call him. It, it just with the understanding of he really, I don't think wants to let me go. So um, I'm really, I rather you, you not unless you're very oh, serious no, no. about yeah. it because I'll have to go back to work for him after. Right. And I've kept this kind of quiet from him. Uh, you know. Hopefully he doesn't live in Sicily. <laughs> well, I'm sure he knows. 90% of the people are watching this show right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not real. Um, the, the only other question I had was in terms of your certification, and you touched on that a little bit. You've taken two years' worth of the process. School. Correct. So how much more is left? Well, you have to take uh, three years of treasurer school and three years of collector school. Unfortunately, they don't let you do that. It's just a year-by-year -year basis, and they only offer it this one week in August. So, uh, you know, I only have two years, but I've only been in the treasurer collector's office two years. So, so it's a, it's a week-long course? It is. It's the so you've taken that for the last two years. Correct. You've got one more year of treasurer School. and then three years of collector. Correct. Now, wh Trisha, what's the impact of that on a treasurer in town? You can be a town treasurer and not be certified? Absolutely. And the statute provides if you become certified, you're eligible for an addition $1,000 in compensation a year. But um, you can hire one without the certification. But obviously, somebody who's going through the process, it's a measure of their devotion and commitment to the position. Right. Good. I'll let someone else. Uh, Sean? Rick can go first. No, go ahead, Sean. <coughs> uh, you live nearby, I take it, Norwell, Hanover, or something like I that? I actually live in Pembroke, on okay. the Pembroke Dexbury line. I just was yeah. curious, um, you know, how much time could you put into this position? I, um, my normal hour, work hours, I've never been my normal work hours. Um, usually, I don't start work until 8 o'clock at Dexbury. I'm usually the first one there to open the doors. Uh, I usually get in about uh, 7. And in our busy season, our beach sticker season, our taxes, I'm there any, anywhere between. We get out of 4, I'm usually there till about 6 o'clock. I'm at the time in my life where I can now go back to a professional job and give it the time that it needs. Uh, and I'm willing to do that. Um, like I said, my responsibilities at home have definitely... Um, coming to an end and I'm um, looking forward to being let there. me know how that works out I might send my daughter so I have an idea yeah. good luck so. <laughs> I've been, he's been a handful what, for a long time what about Fridays regular day no problem working no I don't have a, a regular uh, problem working a regular day if it needs be I'll be here all right so in also, other words there are no restrictions on your hours and no absolutely not no I'm all set. Rich is all set? Yep. Excellent. My question was asked. Just John? Have you seen, looked at our capital plan or anything? Uh, I have. I've done a lot of investigating on Situate. Situate and Duxbury are a lot alike. Um, you know, Duxbury last year's town census was 15,000. You guys have 18,000. We're a seacoast community just like you. I mean, we have those issues where I do go to the selectmen meetings every once in a while. Um, we do have the same issues with roads and the the coast. We have beach stickers. We have shellfish. We have um, moorings. We have the same thing that goes on here. So um, you've done bonding. I have. I've done a little bit of bonding. I haven't done a lot of borrowing. I just really started getting into borrowing. Um, Duxbury's just got their AAA rating actually we were just told uh, last Thursday uh, I was uh, involved in that process um, which was huge it's great and um, do you know what ours is uh, yours is also a AAA right oh in double AA right now oh, it's yours. Um, just chess or B double A oh That's you're B double A oh I thought you were AAA that's alright we just, will just be just a trick we will be oh <coughs> That's why we, we want to be triple. <coughs> well, I can help. <laughs> <laughs> Good Great answer. answer. Great answer. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, further discussion from the board? From the floor, any questions? Pam, thank you. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Our anticipation is to is to make a vote later on this evening. Okay. Um, Trisha will call you one way or the other tomorrow. Uh, yep. Okay. 
Okay? All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you again for applying. Thanks. All right. Thanks again. Is anybody else cold? Um, we could. Really I got my. Uh, Want to shut that off? I'll get it. It's done. I think. No. Well, maybe it's Are not you? Done. I can't reach it. <laughs> I know, that's why I'm you. I'd have to stand on my chair. <laughs> uh, would someone ask? Uh, I'll get her. Uh, Paula, I think so. Thank you. Kind of hot now. <laughs> Put it back on. <laughs> Jordy. <laughs> I'm standing on my tiptoes right now. Phone <laughs> books too. <laughs> So this one's What's that? Yeah, I need my hockey stick. Paula, how are you? Good, thanks. How you doing? Fine, thank Hi, you. Hi. Uh, Paula Nez uh, is the treasurer of Bridgewater. Again, I've also known Paula over the years since she came to Bridgewater, and, and we thank you very much for applying. Thank you. Uh, what we did with the other candidate is we just asked uh, her to just give us a brief update on your background and why you applied, that type of thing. And then the board will ask a few questions. Sure. Um, my career actually started out in information systems. I did that for uh, the better part of 15 years, mostly in consulting. And I worked, uh, I had my own business for a while with my husband. And um, I just started developing a greater interest in what was going on in my town. And that's when I started getting more involved. And then when uh, the business was kind of winding down, I figured it was a, it made for a nice career change for me because I had always been interested in numbers and finance and even in information systems. I did a lot of work with numbers, working on general ledgers and, and for banks and, and whatnot. Um, so, so far I've liked it a lot. Um, it's been pretty challenging in Bridgewater. There's a lot of change going on there. Um, and I think Situate would be a nice a nice move for me right now, where it's uh, it's a little bit more stable. Um, the staff, like I said, it's been a, there's been a lot of change in, in Bridgewater here. It seems to be more experienced and um, can help give me the the room I need to to, to grow and develop to my potential uh, as a treasure collector. And I've been taking all the classes at Amherst to do what I can to get the education background that I need to do that, and working hard. Can you expand just on that a little bit? Where are you in the process? As far as... Are you certified? No, I've taken all the classes I need for the treasurer side. So um, you've gone three years? Three years, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll be, I am eligible to take the exam in August. Okay. And I've taken about 10 of the classes on the collector's side. So hopefully a year or two after that, I could do the collector exam. So you have a little bit more on the collector's side? Right. I focused on the treasurer's side because that's where Bridgewater needed the uh, the extra help at, at the time. And I, I think I was missing page one of your resume. Yeah. Um, can you just run through the... I agree. Um, unless you have it there, I can save it. Yeah, I just have my copy. Sure. Thanks. It's double sided. Thank you. There you so that's where you're saying for four there. years you worked the, the Senna South is was the company Senna. that you South of Boston, yeah. Right. And then you transitioned in two thousand and ten up to the town of Bridgewater. Correct. And what position did you start out there? In Bridgewater? Yeah. I was elected as treasurer and tax oh, collector. Oh, that's right. It's an elected. I'm sorry, I got the two. It's no longer, but that's. So you got elected as the treasurer. And collector, yeah. And collector. And now, how is it now? Now it's appointed by selectmen? Yes, my term was up in April. And so in the same election, they made it a, a appointed positions. Okay. And did they reappoint you? Uh, kind of default appointment at now because the town manager left as an interim town manager. We're kind of waiting for the new okay. town manager to come in. Right. Yep, I, I, I think I believe I do. 
And I see you have some IT background as well. That's the consulting stuff that you did? Correct. So, so uh, as, as some of the questions that we asked, have you done bond? Do you do a lot of bonding? We've been doing a lot lately, a lot of refunding and community preservation. Um, there's a couple of purchases for that. Um, we're getting into the enterprise funds more. There was, there was almost $10 million or so that was authorized last year. So we need to, to make a move on that, get the green light letters and move forward with a lot of that. So who does your bonding? You do it, you do it through... Do you have a different company that... The that Bond Council yeah. is um, um, Edwards Wildman, and um, financial advisor is Unibank. Are you done? Yeah, go ahead. I'm just <laughs> trying to... I'm doing these long I'm walls. Watching you can you pick just up the like. right. How many people have you managed right now with the town of Bridgewater? There are three people. Three people. Besides myself. So, uh, and I'm just looking at because I didn't have the benefit, as um, Mr. Murray had mentioned. F for all intents and purposes, you've been dealing with obviously um, experience with accounting mm -hmm. up until about 2010. 2010 is really when you got involved in municipal government. Correct. Okay. Um, and um, just have you looked at our long range plan or capital plan, you know, for the town at all? Situate, in other words, what, with, with the duties of the treasurer. Have you looked at what we have, what we're trying to do? I know you've got a lot of things coming up. Yep. Um, I, I focus more on the chart or seeing the differences on how things work there and read the, um, the last town administrator's report um, with some of the issues that are going on with. Do you have restrictions on hours? In other words, um, have you seen the, the, the hours of the town? No, you're situated? late on Tuesday night and early on Fridays. Right. And do you have problems with that? No. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and um, outside of that, um, those are my questions. Thank you. Rick? Okay. Hi. What do you think would be your biggest challenge? I mean, you're, you, Bridgewater is a, what's the population of Bridgewater? 27,000. 27,000. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, what do you think your biggest challenge would be coming here to Situate with, with what we're trying to do and, and how that meshes with your background and all that sort of stuff? Well, I mean, obviously, I, I don't mind taking on new things because that's kind of a, a bit of a, a career jump. Um, but there are things that, that are different in reading through your charter. We, uh, we have a school district in Bridgewater, which has its own um, challenges, but it would be different. You've got the more employees to deal with um, when you have a, a, it's not a regional school district. Um, I know you got a lot of borrowing coming up and a lot of uh, financial planning. That's the kind of thing that I'm looking to get into, mm -hmm. more of the long range planning more of the um, financial forecasting, that kind of thing. I took a little bit of that in college. Um, but that's really kind of where I wanted to, to get involved. That's why I decided to run. It's because I saw things that going on and I had different ideas from, from my background and my education and uh, just wanted to be a part of it. I don't necessarily think I'm going to, I mean, just to be a part of it and put my two cents into it and um, to learn and grow. Now you've got, you've got some IT background as well and working yeah, in that? Yeah, most of my, yeah, it's about 15 years of it. How do you think we're doing on that or what opportunities do you see? Are there things we could do better that you would be interested in or any, and the, if the answer is no, that's fine too. I'm just, I mean, I haven't really on? looked at what Situate per se is doing with their IT, but th there's always room for improvement for business process analysis. I've found some of that with Bridgewater as well. Um, what I find, I've talked to some of the software companies because I'd like to, to see it changed in Bridgewater. Um, the whole customer relationship management aspect of it, I don't see anyone really tackling that so that, you know, from a treasure collector standpoint, you've got somebody in front of you, you want to know what their relationship is with the town. You don't want to be talking about, say, like a small excise tax bill for their son's car when you've got, you know, somebody who's got a lot of businesses in town. You want to know what that person is to the community. Um, that's the piece that I see missing in a lot of the software. Um, but I don't, I don't know that it's... Yeah, sure. Uh, All right. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, um, Mr. Chair. Just one more quick question. You live in Bridgewater. Correct. Why do you want to leave? What, what, are you, what are you looking for 
in terms of change? I mean, it's a big position in a bigger town. Right. Right around the corner from your house, probably. Um, what's drawing you to situate? I want to be a full-time treasure collector, to be honest with you. I mean, I think there's where things, we're very understaffed, and I'm finding myself doing a lot of assistant-type work, and I want to get into more of the, 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 the five-year plans, the capital plans, the forecasting, and be involved in that aspect of it because that's the piece I need to, to learn and grow and to get the certification, I'm gonna need to do more of that stuff and not um, submitting bills and that kind of stuff. It's a full-time position now, but you have to do it's more the secondary work. In Bridgewater, yeah. it's more than a full-time position, yeah. There's, there's only three people and there's, the staff is smaller in Bridgewater than it is in here. Right. So you'd have to resign your position there? Is that right? I would be, yeah. John? And how much time would you typically give them? Two it's weeks? A month? Notice? If, if, yeah. It, it would be two weeks, I would think. Yeah. Okay. So, any questions for us? I'm good. Questions from the board? Anything from the, from the audience? Uh, okay, Paula, we're going to be reaching a decision later on this evening. As we told the other candidates, Trisha will call tomorrow or notify everyone tomorrow on our decision. But again, okay. thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, next, moving right along, we're going to go to the 7:30 round, uh, the roundabout discussion that we that we uh, had to. I just saw Al walk by. I think Al, I saw Jim Cantwell a moment ago, so I think they're both out there. Thank you, fellas, for all for waiting. Um, I'm taking my jacket off here because you're going to be in a. Uh, <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Good evening again. Good evening, how are you? Fine, thank you. Um, we're here for a, a, what I think is a, a very good topic, which is to discuss uh, the roundabout. Al, if you just take one moment and introduce our, our guest, we'd appreciate yes. it very much. Um, I'm actually, sure everybody I, knows both of them, but. I'm pretty much the guest here, but uh, Chris <laughs> Kennedy is, is going to be the spokesperson for this topic. And of course, you're familiar with Representative Cantwell, who was well, one of the key drivers in helping Chris uh, bring this topic to the point that it is today. And the, the topic is the Situate Roundabout. Um, as you remember, when it was being built back in 06 and even before that, there was a lot of consternation about the roundabout would be a big disaster for traffic. And since that time, we've had a lot of comments, uh, positive comments about the Situate Roundabout, in fact, aiding in the flow of traffic in that area. Uh, it hasn't impeded trucks. Uh, we haven't had accidents. There have been uh, no uh, accidents with injury at that roundabout, to my knowledge, unlike when we had multiple intersections and the uh, traffic lights. The one complaint we have had is that it's ugly as can Sin. be. <laughs> and so that's where I'll turn now to Mr. Kennedy, who uh, wants to do something about that. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. Um, my name is Chris Kennedy of Kennedy's Country Gardens, and um, basically this all started with my dad, who's had a business in town um, here for 52 years, and uh, for a while when he re he's retired now, but he was driving back and forth from Florida, and he would drive into the state of Massachusetts and be somewhat disappointed with the the appearance of the roadsides. And we've been involved with different beautification projects throughout the years. That's pretty much what we do for our business, but. Um, the roundabout uh, seemed to be a good opportunity to have an example of something we can do across the state and hopefully Situate can be one. Um, actually, I had met previously with the uh, Mass Highway Commissioner back with Frank Hines um, way back a few years and um, 
we talked about this idea as a state project and uh, hopefully this will be an example of something we can do and one of the things that we, we thought had to happen was we needed to have an incentive to have a beautiful area and have it um, kept well for years to come so my thought is well let's put someone's name on it and I was happy to be the person to step up to do so and in th this situation I hope it's going to be a win-win um, if it's not a win-win it doesn't seem to work so our goal is to um, hopefully if people see it drive around it looks beautiful then hopefully they'll think to um, instead of going to maybe a mass merchant or hardware store they might come to a local business family business and buy their mums or whatever there um, and in, in exchange we're going to beautify the town for many years to come um, and the thought process is that uh, we had done this in different places the conditions are very difficult um, it's wide open and windy hot sunny dry road salt and pollution um, it's not easily accessible low maintenance and I should add that um, there's a lot of rules and regulations to deal with including safety and so forth so um, there are some obstacles we need to uh, overcome but our plan is to remove the existing weeds and grass and add compost um, uh, we've had some people that are willing to donate some things like Lions Head Organics and Cohasset they were willing to give us some compost and some mulch from Gold Green and Situate and some grass seed from Pearls Premium and hopefully lots of beautiful but low maintenance plants to minimize weeds on unnecessary care um, we've done I've had an opportunity to do an island um, in Marshfield the Summer Street Island which we get some comments on we donated the plants for that and previously that was an eyesore and um, very similar situation um, it's kind of a, in the wide open and it's a low maintenance situation um, but we've managed to uh, keep the keep the island looking good with help from um, one of the garden clubs in Marshfield who's, who's done a great job helping us um, but these are some of the plants we've used um, one of the things we have a problem with in the in the roundabout is the height so I'm, I'm able to use different heights in some of these photographs I'm showing we may not have that ability but we hope to maybe add some more height later if they allow us to do so um, this is the train crossing in front of the DPW and we've done some of the work um, there as well this was not volunteer work but um, you know we were we were this is a very difficult cir circumstances so we're trying to use plant material that's going to live um, and if they can live in these situations we're hoping that they can do the same here this is one of the drawings that I've done um, and actually uh, I left some space in the middle for hopefully future expansion so the um, Department of Transportation right now would prefer that we don't do anything permanent um, in the means of you know a, f a, f a, pole, like a pole in the middle that might have a sail or something fun that maybe we can do someday or a boat um, idea of mossing boats um, fishing boats that type of thing we had some thoughts of using um, but we want to prove that we can maintain these for a few years and then we're going to go back and possibly um, you know add some ideas um, to this and I'd like to use a boat as a planter or that type of thing just to add a little bit more visual appeal um, and just some of the plants we're talking about using the switchgrass which is a native grass um, very reliable comes back year after year and has some burgundy in it which is pretty in especially this time of the year um, this is some hyssop that uh, seems to bloom all summer and all fall for me in my yard and some indigo that blooms really early um, this is another native plant called Amsonia or Blue Star um, beautiful um, flowers but also exceptional foliage and gorgeous in the fall and that's one of the goals is to make it look like a nice New England planting um, cat mint which we use around town quite a bit and it's just a good long bloomer um, an early bloomer that would st which stays low is called Dianthus firewitch and maybe we'll mix in some more burgundies and plenty of annuals and the idea with many of these things is they'll come back and fill up a lot of that space so we don't have weeds to grow but also we can change the colors from year to year and add some annuals that bloom the entire season um, and one of the other things I thought of is that uh, one of the challenges we have is mowing it and DPW since uh, Alan th their team has stepped up the island looks a whole lot better because uh, they basically have you know adopted the site um, if I can reduce the amount of mowing that would even be better so I could use ground covers like this where basically we just have to go in and weed it once in a while but not necessarily have to mow it from week to week and hopefully I'll be able to expand how big of an area I can actually plant um, and these are a couple of the ground covers that um, I'm suggesting to use and that's my son planting a tree um, in front of town hall here and we're hoping to get going great Chris thank, thank you, you.
Jim, would you like to add anything? I know you were very helpful in this whole process, and we as a town appreciate it very much as usual. Sure, that'll be very brief, Mr. Chairman. I know you've had a long meeting already, uh, but I just wanted to one thank the board and uh, the town administrator, Trisha Van Casey, for. Uh, really being behind this throughout and, and giving the support to Al because this uh, project, I know uh, Chris had started this before I came in and it was one of the earliest conversations that we had with how this is really a gateway for Situate. And uh, Chris has been offering now for some four and a half, five years to be the person that would take care of it and, and make sure that it would be beautified. And I can tell you through the process, Chris, that you educated me through the process, a uh, number of state officials who you presented to who were seeing this is as a win-win because the state DOT doesn't have the funds to do this kind of beautification, to have local business leaders come to the forefront and say, we want to make sure this first thing that many people see coming into Situate is going to be properly uh, uh, beautiful, aesthetically beautiful, and we do hope down the line of having something that could be uh, either a fishing boat or a mossing boat, something in the middle that would bring uh, some uh, attention to our heritage. But I, I did want to thank Chris uh, for his time uh, and for putting this tremendous effort and knowing it'll be a, a great deal of work for you to do, Chris. By the way, as I said, Chris and I, not only is he a business leader, but we coach baseball together years ago. So I've known him many, many years and know he's just an outstanding person and uh, will do a great job. And Al, thank you for, for really the work. Uh, we, uh, with your leadership and with Trish, we met with DOT officials a few months ago to say this was going to be a, a, a main priority. This board wanted to see some action. And I appreciate your giving the, uh, the discretion and the, uh, the opportunity for all of us to work together to make it happen. So thanks for your time. Thank you, Jim. From the board, comments? Yeah, I just want to say, uh, Chris, thank you, you know, uh, f so that people understand, you know, we've been getting comments all the time. Jim, you've worked so well, I mean, for the Department of Transportation, long and short of it, it's about time. And I, I mean, you've been trying to do this for a number of years, and, uh, you know, I think it's really unique. We have a partnership with a, pr a situate business that's stepping up to the plate saying we'd like to do this. It's not going to cost the town anything. It's going to beautify the town and uh, just the local businesses, as you, you referenced, participating in this. So it's a collective partnership, and um, it's exciting. Finally, people can finally see the progress. And uh, just, again, commend uh, uh, Representative Cantwell for, for sticking in there and trying to get the DOT to finally relinquish to let us do it through the um, MBTA to, to do this. So it's exciting, and it's nice. Thanks. Thank you. Rick? Yeah, you know, I think we started this back in 08, because <laughs> I was chair at the time, and we, the MBTA wouldn't let us talk about it until the Greenbush project was accepted and signed off, because the rotary was all part of the Greenbush project. So every little thing up in Hingham and every little thing up in Quincy and every little railing had to be signed off on by the MBTA. And then it just went through labyrinths. So those people that think, the wheels of government turn slowly. They do, but they start, they do turn. And this outcome here is fantastic for all the reasons that you all articulated and John just articulated as well. So, Chris, thanks for stepping up. And Jim, as you said, you know, thank you so much for your work on pushing this through. This is this is great. And uh, you know, it's taken a while, but this is perfect. Thank you, Tony. I'll just add, uh, Jim. You know, again. Uh, every issue that comes before the town of Situate, you always stand behind us. You help it get through, like uh, Rick mentioned. Sometimes it's slower than we, we'd like it to be, but you, you're always there behind us. And That's I want to thank you personally for that. And I want to, the 15 people that are watching, you know, there's an election <laughs> coming up in a couple of days. And just let everybody know that Jim does a great job for this community. And we really do appreciate it. Um, Chris, you know, it's you're very generous you know that it's a yeah. big piece of property there it's money it's time and it's it's uh, you know very generous of you to take it on um, you know who knows what what you'll reap in terms of sales but I don't think that's the goal I think your goal is really to take a piece of property and show what you do and anybody that knows uh, obviously everybody knows where Kennedy is but if you look at the landscaping right out in front of his place it's flawless it makes that house across the street look like uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, um, I know it's going to look great because, you know, you just look at the work that you do right there. So thank you for your, your generosity. I got a question. I, if I could. Go ahead. So some of your pictures showed, and I know we've talked about signs, and I know from my previous involvement, there's, there's regulations and height and all this sort of stuff. But um, regarding a sign, at some point, if there's something we could do about that, maybe we could work with some other businesses and, and so on to help on that because it would be, it would be nice to at least get a nice sign there. You know, they're they're supposed well. to provide the uh, 
Department of Transportation is supposed to provide it as part of a adopt a lot type program that they already have in place. So we're hoping that that's going to okay. fall into place as because there are a lot of restrictions and they'll, they actually are harder to bring mm -hmm. outside companies in. I think they actually oh, right. want to funnel you into using some of their preferred okay. vendors, so to speak. But yeah. we'll um, certainly keep you up to speed. We're very excited about this. We have this to jump a hoop. Yeah. Again, as we said, I certainly am not going to repeat it. Uh, thank you all for all you've done. Uh, motion, Mr. Chair? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the offer of Kennedy's Country Gardens to plant and maintain landscaping in the center of the Greenbush Roundabout. Second. Uh, for the discussion, you're seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You're seeing Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you, Chris. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Al, I believe we're going to do the paving contract now. Thanks, Chris. One more brief topic from me, and then I'll get out of your way. Um, this requests that you sign a contract with a second bidder for the asphalt paving contract. Uh, the low bidder has been uh, somewhat unresponsive, and we want <coughs> to uh, have uh, two paving contractors in our kit so that we can uh, move forward on paving roads. We were delayed in August significantly by uh, the incumbent contractor who kept pushing back, <coughs> pushing back the schedule and uh, to the point that we're now bumping up against schools. They have responded aggressively in the last two days before school started, so we've paved, uh, been able to pave in front of the Jenkins School, but we're disappointed in that we haven't been able to close up the other roads that we opened up early so we could get paved and closed before school started. Um, the second bidder, T.L. Edwards, uh, uh, has a price that's uh, less than three-tenths of a percent higher than the first bidder, so we're not looking at uh, an expenditure of the town's money unwisely. It's just that we think having the two contractors on hand, we will be able to um, uh, move more quickly on paving roads. So we'd like you to award uh, a second contract for asphalt paving to T.L. Edwards of Avon, Massachusetts. Uh, discussion from the board? Is it because we're not going with the, uh, I guess this is probably directed towards you, Tricia, with the lowest bidder, and there's a difference of $13,000. We're not under any obligation to go with the lowest bidder, are we? Is there well, like there's a, a termination a clause in the contract, and this was bid on behalf of numerous towns of MP MAPC, so Al and I reviewed the termination requirements and everything's in order. In other words, that we're not going to turn around and have uh, aggregate turn around and say, well, you didn't take us, so therefore we want to no. Sue you or, 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 or raise some issues. All right. Just go on. Al, since we spoke today, um, whose responsibility was it to raise the structures? Aggregate. The uh, contractor, the paving contractor. Yeah. That's why we had other companies come in to do it. We had one from Hull. We had our own people. We had Russell Totman out there doing it. Um, we would rebuild, we, versus Russell Topman would be rebuilding structures for us, but okay. the adjustments associated with repaving is, uh, the is part of the contractor's contract. Uh, so they, and they subbed that out so that we're, for instance, you've seen a number of contractors in the last couple of days adjusting structures. Generally what you can do is if you remove uh, two inches of, of asphalt, uh, you'll find that some of the structures are tilted, some were too low to start with, some were too high. So those kind of adjustments are done by the paving contractor. Not the, not Edwards, the grinding contractor. Correct. All right. By the paving contractor. They, they were just, they were just done. And that was my question. If they weren't ready to come in, then right. we really can't fault them. And I was as frustrated as you, but if it's, that is also part of their contract. Yes. Then, um, Yep. They're really at fault, in my opinion. Just, just uh, briefly, Al, I know that um, we've heard about aggregate. T.L. Edwards is the one that we're looking at, correct? Yes. So what have they done in the town in the past? They were a paving contractor last year, for instance. So, so for like Tilden and for... Um, uh, yeah, Stock, they did... Not Stockbridge. Uh, they did Tilden, um, Curtis, um, numerous streets. Yeah. One thing I was going to say... They also provide an additional service in that before they pave, they come out and walk the streets uh, they put they put down a false center line so that when they pave, 
um, when they show up to pave, it's ready to go. One thing I think I talked to you um, in the past about was the paving that <coughs> we do, done during the summer, which is kind of more beneficial because of the heat. I thought Tilden and some of these other streets were done during like the fall, late fall, October, November. Is that a concern that you have that you know they're going to be doing it during colder seasons where absolutely maybe the we don't want to push we don't want to push paving back in the fall. What happens in the fall is that every town gets panicked to get their streets done before the first cold. So, so, so this, my point is yes. with T L Edwards. Is that a concern you have given the fact that their history has been no? It wasn't that wasn't T L Edwards. Okay. What we did this year was we. Because we were funded extra money through the override, we were able to start paving, uh, start our whole uh, roads program earlier this year. And so we had the grinding company, which is TL Edwards, different phase of TL Edwards, but they came in and did all our grinding in July so that we were ready to pave August 1st. And then we waited three or four weeks for the paver to show up. I'm happy with them. They, they got the grinding done in like two days, done, yeah. gone. Yeah. Just, you said a couple places had been paved by Jenkins, and you got a couple done. Uh, the, couple thus far, they have paved. They paved Hollett Street. Who's they? Uh, oh, so I'm sorry. You're referring to the who stuff you, you asked? You just said some stuff got done before school started. Yes. Who did that? Aggregate. Aggregate. Did. Yes. The current contractor paved first. Uh, we paved Hollett Street, and we've paved um, First Parish from the harbor up to and almost to Stockbridge Road. So we, we concentrate on getting that done uh, so we wouldn't have kids walking to school and uh, have the pavers work in that area. So but how much of that percentage-wise? Is that 20% of the? Oh, that was probably about 20%. We'll, we'll, have them, we'll have them wrap up the work they've got, and then we'll just switch the new work, the, the additional work we have, we'll, we'll switch. Okay. okay. That, Good. that was my next question. Are we going to continue to do more? Um, paving in the town after yes. these roads are done? Yes, we have uh, streets out in the west end to do. You know, we got some over in the Egypt area to do. Um, we've got numerous streets to pave yet. Uh, Mordecai Lincoln, we're going to pave the second half of that. And yeah. do you have a date, much like we, Rick or John said, a drop dead date that you won't let them pave? Um, well, well, we'll pave up until. Uh, the sooner the better, you know. Yeah, the sooner the better. You know, we can pave well up until early November. The problem is that you're fighting with all the towns who are scrambling to try to get it done. So the sooner you do it, the more you have control over your schedule. And you know, it's you want to you want to grind, adjust and pave. But you you can't do one little street then the next little street then the next little street. You bring the grinder in, you want to do three or four or five streets and then have them follow behind paving three or four streets and then go to the next three or four streets because part of the cost is just getting the equipment in town. Motion? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to sign the contract for asphalt paving with T.L. Edwards of Avon, Massachusetts at the prices quoted in the response to the to the request for bids issued by the South Shore Regional Surfaces Consortium through June 2013 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years at the town's sole discretion. Second. Our motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion from the Board, from the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, with the board's permission, I'd like to take a quick two-second break just to run down to the men's room, and I want to be here for the water resource thing. So. Sure. Right? Yep. Give me a five-minute break.
Yeah. 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 Good. Good. No, no rush. I'll see you later. We can work. I can work around your schedule. I think we're on the same page. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, we're waiting for Tony. <laughs> Those are the. I'm curious. It's all good. They do. Yes. Okay. I read that. Uh, a discussion and a vote of the Water Resource Protection District zoning by the radicals. Uh, we're coming back to the meeting. Laura <coughs> and Bill. Okay. Um, I, I guess you know the reason we're here is yes. because uh, back a few months ago, Al came to me and asked if I would work on some zoning amendments so that Situate could meet the requirements of the DEP for the water withdrawal permit. So um, that started the development of some zoning that is um, going to have to be an amendment to the existing Water Resource Protection District. <coughs> and basically DEP wants things a little bit tougher and they want things a little different for the the protection of the wells versus the protection of the reservoir. There's some really subtle differences between the way they want those two things protected. So uh, what they recommend that towns do is to create districts, a separate district for the wells and a separate one for the tributaries and the reservoir. So that's basically what was done. Um, there's a new map that would be adopted. There are some changes in the regulations because there are these new sub-districts, and um, that's the gist of what we did. And, yeah. and it's been, the planning board has talked about it. They voted to send it to you all so that you could send sure. it back to us uh, or to the planning board if you, if you decide to do that. Um, there also was a discussion with the Water Resource Committee, which um, started to be, you know, to become pretty in-depth and then they wanted a um, kind of like a red line copy of it showing every single change, which I, I think we were able to put together and distribute that around. Rick was at that meeting. He got a copy of it. Um, and we're waiting to have another meeting with them. But to get it on the fall town meeting warrant, you know, we need, you know, to have it keep moving forward at this point. And the, the, the purpose of this would be to to go forward to the town meeting with the changes or yeah, yeah just to put it on the warrant just put it on the warrant so that's what you're really at you're asking to yeah, what we're asking for you to do is to come back up and yep. put a spot on a warrant for it refer it back to the planning board yep. so that we can initiate the public hearing process yep. right i think we've already committed to be back with with wrc on the 18th yep. yeah on the 18th so working with them as well as the, the meetings with public meetings advisory board and so forth from the board discussion just one question, one question. I, the map's great the only question I had was I know that there's a, a well that's off of Hollett Street or near um, what is it near um, three Hall ring Hollett and country way Hollett and, 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 and I know there's nothing surrounding that I mean is that something that maybe we should consider I mean it's a well that we're thinking of trying to recreate, not recreate <coughs> but, uh, bring back online so to speak in the future and I just was curious had anybody discussed that or had, I'm pretty sure the reason that's not there is because they're only protecting, you know, zones of Existing wells that are ones. being pumped now. Um, you know, you could certainly add that area in or um, try to estimate where it's going to be, but I don't know how you do it, you know, as far as the, the area that it's going to draw down from. I don't know how you could do it fast in time for town meeting. Um, I only yeah, say so, it because so maybe it's, it's this is a place to start and something to, uh, going forward. I thought that the town's considering. I know the water department has mentioned it going forward. I think Al, Al's not here. Uh, Al's here in the back. It's not in the short term, but maybe a, a midterm, if you will. And I've just my only reason for saying it going forward, at least to have it there. Or, so I, 
can't have it for town meeting. I would not delay this. That's not my point. But to put it on to amend, amend it so that we have it in the future would only make sense because then people would realize this is a protected area for obvious reasons, you know, for protecting the water we, supply. That could be included. If you're going to open it up, that area up, uh, revisit that well, that would be the time to do it then, too. Because that would define, I think, better to best define the area. All right. Rick? Thanks. Yeah, um, I was at the Water Resource Committee meeting where um, Laura, Bill, and Al, and uh, Jim DeBarros presented this. And uh, this is, a, I think, a step overall in a positive direction to bring us into regulatory compliance and, and really help on the water withdrawal permit, which, as Bill says, you know, that's really the bottom line where we really got to get at here. Um, we did ask, or I did ask for a red line version, and I do ask them again to, when you are sending this out to us, to this board as well, um, please make sure you have that red line version so we can see how the changes are, because I want to make really sure that um, there's no inadvertent, and I emphasize the word inadvertent, weakening of, of all the efforts that have gone towards protecting our water resources over the last 15, 20 years. Um, and, uh, to that end, um, uh, what was my point? Oh, yeah. So the map, which is a good map, and what one of the members of the Water Resource Commission uh, brought this up. The map is, quote, unquote, um, just a map, and it's interpreted, it's, in, it's subject to interpretation, obviously, visually. And so one of the things the Water Resource Commission is going to be looking at is to make sure that the map is backed up by uh, wording in the revised bylaws, such as, you know, 400 feet from this or 200 feet from that type of thing, because people can be looking at a map and blowing it up and the way it gets printed and all this sort of thing. So the map is part of the story, but only part of the story, and the wording um, rewrites are going to be really where the rubber hits the road. And um, so we, I've asked them uh, hopefully to be able to get this for the special town meeting and the water resources committee is going to be looking at this i've asked as our liaison to the water resources committee that they provide the board of selectmen and the planning board their written comments on this so we can weigh their input formally um, in this process as well i mean you can see i just printed out page one um, there are a lot of of changes a lot of these deletions look pretty severe but they've really just been moved somewhere else and we really need to be able to look at that because again I just want to make really sure we don't have any inadvertent weakening of water protection not only for what we have now but as John just said what we might have uh, in the future um, as well so I certainly applaud this effort it's a great thing for the town and uh, you know as as uh, Laura and Bill have mentioned this is most likely going to strengthen um, our protection which is the proper direction to go. Thank you. Can I make a point? Go ahead. Pick up on what you said. It's an important point. I think Laura's I think has done a fantastic job of restructuring 520 so that you're looking at at discrete areas and how those areas are defined as well as what's applicable and what can be can be allowed in, within those areas. So 520 is not an easy read on a good day. Yeah. Right. And hopefully when we get finished with this, we'll come back up and, and, and Laura with her wordsmithing capability will have that straightened out so that you go from section to section and understand it right, and, yeah. and, and eliminate any, any congruity that may exist in the existing one. And this is going to, you're going to have public meetings, if I recall, oh. at least one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because, you know, when CPC land acquisitions come up and everything and or, or other pieces of property, people say, well, this has got, this is going to have benefit to the town water supply. And that just might be someone's opinion until you actually get to this document and you actually see, does it have does it really have impact on the town water supply or not? So there's a lot of, it's not just a bylaw. I mean, there's a lot of uh, ancillary spin-offs where this is very important, the water withdrawal permit, potential land acquisition, potential uses of trails, and, you know, all sorts of things. Tony? Um, so I think I understood that right, that you are going to provide us with section-by-section -section changes, so we'll understand it when we get to the next step in the process. Um, one thing on the map, it said we're adding six acres of more protection to the watershed. I couldn't figure out where that was on the map. And maybe, you know, is it the difference between the green line and the blue line? And I don't need that right now. We'll go through that. But if we can get that in the process also so that it's very clear on the map where the expansion is occurring. I can drop off some maps with Kim that show where that right. is. And the only other thing I read here that I was a little bit surprised of is that they want to remove 
the um, pro prohibitions from swimming and boating in the surface water supply. So that means that you'd be able to swim and boat in our reservoir, in our water reservoir, is that correct? It, it doesn't, it sounds like that, but actually the way it's, it's the reason why that's being recommended to be done is that right now, because that's in zoning, that means that the building department has to enforce that, and they're not here 24-7, whereas if it's in a town bylaw or if it's you know done by signs at the water department, then the police and you know the water division people are there all the time. So we're thinking so that about they would just do changing it. it from a bylaw to change. The, what the, in effect the change does is it allows enforcement right to prohibit it. Okay, it but we are eliminate. still going to prohibit people from swimming in the reservoir. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Just one okay. last question for you. I noticed that you got zone A and zone two. Is the reason why I'm looking at zone A and then I'm saying, assuming then wouldn't there be presumably zone B, I, I saw the bylaws then I, or the proposal and then I see zone two, presupposes that there's a zone one. Is that just a, something you're trying to put in conformity so it would be, if you're going to have zone A, then shouldn't it be zone B or um, zone I, one versus zone two? Or I'm just only saying because yeah, now you yeah. got A and then you're going to numbers, uh, Th there's numerical, not, not Roman numeral numbers. There's not total logic to this, but the surface water has the letters and the wells have the numbers um, and the surface water people want you to protect immediately adjacent you know up to 200 feet around the tributaries and 400 feet around the reservoir and the well people have an area immediately around the well which is a zone one which is 400 square feet and that's you know you can't do anything in that area and then they have the zone two which is the area of drawdown and that's where they want to regulate because, and, and the zone two includes the zone one. It's just a larger area, um, but with the with the surface water, they don't regulate out beyond the the 200 or 400 feet. No problem. I was just wondering, would you want to okay, put like a footnote just to say this is the reason so well, people don't know, say, wait, we're, we're zone one and we're zone two? You know, I mean, be, anyway, I'm just only suggesting it for yeah, continuity it's, it's, it's purposes not, yeah. to understand it for people who lay people who read this and say, wait a minute, am I missing something here? Anyway. All right, well, we, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for this question for the board. Motion, love it. Um, move the Board of Selectmen vote to refer zoning bylaw changes, in parenthesis, Water Resource Protection District, to the Planning Board for their review and recommendations, and further that space be reserved for the special town meeting warrant for these articles. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. A discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hi, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Joe, so can I ask a question to Al on a related topic? Yep. The water level in the reservoir is very low right now. Is that anything to be concerned about, or is it just? Uh, uh, we may be coming back and uh, looking at further restrictions. But we're monitoring that. But it's it's visually it's low, but as you said, the majority of the water is underground, anyways. Yes, well, the water in the reservoir, it hasn't hit any, it hit, hasn't hit a trigger point where we say it's time to increase restrictions. We're thinking now with cooler weather, um, things are leveling off. Okay. Great. Uh, next is agenda item number 14. This is will be a discussion and a vote. Uh, correspondence, board and town administrator will be regarding the Hammer Rock response letter and the response letter to the Patriot Ledger. At the end of me reading this statement, uh, a statement which you all have received, uh, and I'll also read it, I'll be asking for a motion and a vote of the full board to endorse this statement. So I think you could read along with me if you'd like. But, uh, as, many, as many are aware, the Board of Selectmen has a pending action at the Attorney General's office for an alleged violation of the open meeting law relative to the approval of contracts in executive session that should have been voted in open session once negotiations were completed. The Attorney General's office took over jurisdiction of open meeting law complaints in 2010 and then, since then has been issuing new guidelines and rulings that in some cases differ from previous practices. Although the board's action was based on guidance from town council, the board nevertheless takes such allegations seriously and immediately corrected that oversight by uh, revoting an open session. Our additional reviews and responding to the attorney general indicate that the board's action, while not intentional, also revealed that the board needed to tighten up 
in other areas such as providing more subject matter, specifically in posting executive sessions instead of uh, the prior brief uh, description. We have employed this greater detail since learning of it last April. Most recently, the board sent out two letters on important town matters that we have discovered did not uh, comport with the, comply with the requirements of the open meeting law. Specifically, on August 17th, the board mailed to all residents and home homeowners of the Hummerock, in Hummerock a letter responding to allegations raised about the board's bonfire ban outlined, outlined in an August 2nd letter. The town administrator was directed by the board chair to draft the letter. She consulted with the fire and police chiefs and then emailed to, to the board members and town council for corrections, approval, etc. In reviewing the open meeting law guidelines, the board has learned that such a letter could not be sent under the board's name unless the board, convening at a duly posted meeting, discussed the letter and directed the town administrator to, to send it. On August 24th, the board emailed to the editor of the Patriot Ledger a letter responding to an editorial that appeared on, the August, uh, on August 23rd, implying that the board acted improperly in a hearing regarding the potential removal of a situate housing authority member. The town administrator recommended in an email that the board responded to the reporting errors via a letter to the editor. She was asked to draft the letter as soon as possible for timeliness reasons and again emailed it to the board members for approval as with the above scenario, the board could not uh, do this absent a public meeting. The board is the town's chief executive officer and the town administrator is a chief administrative officer are faced with many requirements, mandates, statutes, and regulations. Not only we, but town staff work hard to ensure compliance. However, we are not perfect and, are those, and on those hopefully rare occasions when we discover practices that are not in compliance with the full intent of the law, we are committed to making it right. Such is the case here. In recent weeks, we have provided every board and committee with the 2012 Open Meeting Law Guidelines prepared by the Attorney General. We have created a web page on the town's website with direct links to the Open Meeting Law Guidelines and FAQs. By providing this information, both we and our residents can have the rules ready, readily available. In any event, uh, we want residents to know we take these guidelines seriously, endeavor to do better, and regret, regret the error. Finally, the board, in accordance with, the, with our greater understanding of the open meeting requirements, will now discuss and vote on the two letters. Such discussion uh, occurring at a public meeting and to be fully considered again by the board. Uh, that's the statement, as I said, uh, we will be asked, I will ask you to vote on these two items. Uh, any discussion anyone would like to come forward with now, please do. Well, first, we vote an endorsement of the statement. You want to do that? Yeah, fine. I don't think you have to, any particular order. Move uh, that we endorse this statement. Second. Discussion? Um, could I expand on that motion to what's suggested here? Sure. Just yeah. so it's very specific. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to endorse the statement of the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen relative to a letter to the editor of the Patriot Ledger and a letter to Hummer Rock residents. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, now, any discussion? Anyone would like to, on those two letters, feel free to do it. Um, sure. The, I mean, the first letter was one that we sent to all the residents of Hummerock. As most of you know, we got a letter from the residents of Hummerock, or a number of them, I don't know, several dozens anyways, um, that had some misstatements in there. And I know the town administrator did her due diligence and sort of the chair and even myself and speaking with the police chief and the fire chief and the people that were on site and, uh, and also some of the residents. And we sent a letter out that corrected some of the facts that were inaccurate and gave all the residents of Hummer Rock um, a better understanding of what, you know, the town feels occurred on that evening. Thank you. Murray? Yeah, the only thing I'd like to add to that is I'd like to thank all the people that have contacted us in strong support of both the, 
the process and the content of us sending out those letters. I mean, people said this is great. It cleared up a lot of inaccuracies. I mean, I know I heard people over, I've overheard people standing in line at various places saying, oh, look what happened, look what happened. And then now there's an official record as to actually what did and didn't happen. And so I think the letters were fantastic. And I'd like to thank everybody for um, those people that called up and said, really appreciated you guys taking the time to write us the letters and uh, explain the situation and um, keep up the good work because I received not a single negative comment at all about the, the content of those letters. And in fact, I received personally, myself, probably 20, 25 positive comments about them. Uh, further discussion, anything on the Hammerock letter or the letter to the Patriot Ledger? Any we'll comments? Want to do them separately? Want to make a motion to do the first one? Or any more? Yeah, I just want to make a comment on the uh, the Hummer Rock letter. I'm going to say I fully support the town behind it. You know, we went through um, after um, there was a lot of what I believe to be uh, misinformation that was put out. Consequently, you know, the town went took a look into this. You know, people's. Um, Perceptions are the reality. Um, we took it upon ourselves, uh, given our position uh, as selectmen, to try to ascertain what went, what, went, what went went on that night. And I think the town, through the administrator, the chiefs, did a thorough job vetting it out to explain uh, the side of the town. And um, you know, consequently, I think it was a well written letter that pretty much explains the details of that night. Um, there may be people who object to it, people who disagree with it, but you know, reasonable minds can disagree. But I think it's very thorough and for our, everybody in the audience, both here and also um, both in the news and also in the television, read the letter. Read it. Uh, I think it's self-explanatory. So I, I, I endorse that full heartedly. Uh, probably, a, probably a motion on the first one would be good. Sure. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to support <coughs> the letter sent to the editor. Uh, should we do both or do them no, separately? Well, we'll do separately. Do them separately. Do the first okay. One. So. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to endorse the statement of the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen no, relative to... We just did that one. You want number two. Well, they're combined in both yeah. of them. So... Uh, I'll tell you what, why don't we do this? Move what, the board one motion. Vote. One motion. Well, hold on, because I'm actually going to abstain from the second letter. I wasn't so let me just do the party first. to it. You so, can abstain. so I'll move the Board of Selectmen vote to support the letter sent to the Hummerock residents, August 2012. I'll second that. Motion has been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's unanimous. With respect to the second letter, I just wanted to have a discussion on that. To the extent of I wasn't present during the uh, executive session, um, so I wasn't privy to what actually transpired. I did read the editorial, um, and I would certainly endorse what was written, um, but I would ask that the board stricken my name from the letter only to the extent that I, was not a particip I wasn't participating on it. And I will abstain from this next vote on this. Further comments from the board? Uh, just a bit of an explanation. The, uh, um, the ledger put an editorial in the paper regarding the um, proceedings that occurred with the Housing Authority and uh, insinuated in the letter that some open meeting laws were violated when, in fact, they weren't. And um, the town administrator and the chair um, wrote a response to that, correctly, a correct response to it, stating that um, due to the situation and that all the uh, acts were followed properly and that there was no violation of the open meeting law and that letter was sent to and printed in the ledger subsequently and there's been no comment or response since that time so um, I support the letter I think we are right and I think uh, it needed to be said Further comments from the board? I, too, completely support the letter and the fact that we sent it to the newspapers hoping that they would publish it, which they, in fact, did, which we thank them for, shows how much our intent was to have this all out in the open. You can't get much more open than asking a, a newspaper to publish a letter. So the whole spirit here and the whole goal is to keep everything completely open. And so uh, I support the letter and I support this uh, process we're doing here to um, make sure we do cross the T's and dot the I's. and. Uh, learn about all these new rules and processes. I think this is a, a big step in our, in, in our effort to be uh, transparent. I think uh, uh, we've always tried to be, as, a, as the statement reads. Sometimes uh, things slip through the cracks, and when they do, and we do find those things, we're going to correct them. Uh, I'll take a motion on the letter to the ledger. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to support the letter sent to the editor of the Patriot Ledger in August of 2012. Second. 
Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Oh, one abstention. The vote is 4 0, one abstention. All right, next item is uh, discussion vote acceptance of land policy consideration of two properties on Chittenden and Hadley Road. Town Administrator. Uh, gentlemen, you have in your packet a memo from me uh, relative to the two proposals uh, in front of you tonight. Um, they're not mutually exclusive, but one isn't tied to the other. Um, as I note in the memo to the board, we continue to get um, requests to accept donations of town land, but the town has really no existing policy or criteria under which <coughs> to evaluate or vet the efficacy of the town acquiring um, those parcels of land. Given that that donation means it comes off the tax rolls, um, I think it um, behooves the town and the board to adopt a policy that creates um, some criteria by which the Conservation Commission and other boards and uh, committees can evaluate uh, the efficacy of the request. So that's pretty much what my memo outlines to you. It gives you a history of um, the land that the town has acquired since FY06 and taken essentially off the tax rolls and suggests some terms and conditions under which the board would uh, have me adopt a policy that we would consider on the go forward for accepting any donations. Absent that policy, it's at the board's sole discretion. Conversely, uh, the criteria under which the town would decide to sell parcels of land, we get a number of inquiries and maintain a list from people about parcels of land the town owns that they would like to acquire. Um, we'd also develop a policy along those lines and come back to the board for adoption and approval of both those policies. I'm happy to answer any questions. Rick Murray. So there's two separate issues here, three separate issues. Issue one is one of these parcels of land. Issue two is the second parcel of land. Issue three is the policies about which you're speaking. Tonight we're not going to be resolving any policy issues. That's correct. Right? Um, okay. Is it your, um, or do you have any comment on uh, is it premature for us to consider these two parcels of land uh, since the policy is not yet in place? Um, I wouldn't suggest that the two individuals who have the parcels before you have actually been waiting a considerable amount of time. I know one of them actually abuts conservation land. Both of them have been endorsed and supported by the conservation department. Um, so it's really the board's discretion. But uh, regardless of what the board's action is tonight, I would ask that before you entertain any further requests that Beyond you have these a policy two. in place. I'm with you on that. Great. Thank you. John? Are we obligated to take it on behalf for, for conservation purposes? Can't we as a board take it for purposes of the town? In other words, I know that a lot of lands are, a lot of people are, 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 are trying to donate back parcels to the town through conservation, but they can also donate it back to the Board of Selectmen instead of the conservation. Yes, Are we correct. stuck to stay with conservation? Because I only say it in that, you know, maybe the board can either resell it in the future, or if not, the, da the board has the opportunity to do different things. But with conservation restrictions, it certainly will limit the board's or the town's ability to do things with those parcels. If, it de if it's determined that we want to put a bike path maybe on a, a portion of um, uh, I think it's it's one the Lad property, I don't know, the Laverty property, or or in conjunction with trails going in through the McDermott property. I'm I'm just I, I just find I'd yeah. like to see it go to the board of selectmen, so that the board would have that option potentially going forward, as opposed to putting a cons uh, conservation restriction on it. No, I think the board can contemplate both those eventualities. I mean, most of the requests you're getting are for unbuildable lots or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I can contemplate either outright from conservation or from the board as a whole. I, I realize with the McDermott there's a vernal pool, which we're not going to build a house on it, but if there's an opportunity for the town to do something, staging for trails or, or something to go through, not to say that conservation is going to say no to it, but if there's a restriction on the property, and this is more or less for people, there's more difficulty to get approval for it, and that's why I'd rather see it go to the Board of Selectmen with the board being able to make maybe a determination on what to do with the property as opposed to saying there's a restriction right out of the gate. I mean, an example would be the, uh, the property that we're, we're considering up on um, 3A, 
um, with um, um, the strategic plan and different things. You know, there, there are some properties up there that we'd have to get out of conservation if we we're going to do something, if we we're going to consider a parcel. I, I just think it would be better for this, for the board to consider taking it through the Board of Selectmen as opposed to putting a restriction on it through ComCom. Uh, Thanks, well. I just want to understand the property. I don't know. If I'm the owner. Hi, how are you? Which property are you yeah. on? Yeah. So I'm looking at a map here. It's six, It's the one where the it's 60. The house is 60. I own both the house which I just sold and the lot is a cr right across from the house. The lot is lot 25. Lot 25. Okay. And so they're both right next to the uh, conservation land of almost 20 acres that was given to the town by the Smith family uh, when Mr. Smith died quite a few years ago. So I, I uh, didn't decide, you know, whether to go to cons. I just told uh, the treasurer um, after my husband died last year that I really, the, the new owners of the house didn't want to buy it. Mm -hmm. They're a young couple and they didn't want to have to pay more taxes. It, it's not, you know, it's, it's across the street. If it was right next to the house, it would have been sold with the house, but it, it's not. So I came to Jane Laporto, and she brought me to conservation. Okay. And I didn't know about uh, any other way to do it. Oh, um, no, I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming you. I'm, uh, my thought was because I know I, I looked at the parcel, and I realized that uh, it abuts both Cushing. Um, elementary school and also the high school property and I yes. know that we that's all town land but if that's it's a right. conservation restriction which I wasn't aware of mm -hmm. again it limits the potential of what we want to do if we want to open ball fields or things of this oh, nature because I, uh, I know that there's obviously right. need for that I, I saw that so that's what I'm saying if we put a restriction on it now yeah. granted maybe all the other surrounding parcel or the Smith parcel was restricted yeah. if we want to do something as a town we're restricted to try to figure out a way to kind of lift that restriction sure. through ComCom. But if we didn't have that restriction in the first place, we might have that opportunity. And the reality is, is if there's a, if there's water, if there's a vernal pool, you're not going to be able to do it anyways. And I Mr. totally Richardson get that. said yeah. that because of the vernal pool down there with the little critters, right. it <laughs> had to be 50, 50 yards and then at some point it changed, it had to be 100 yards, yeah. and therefore he declared it unbuildable. But, uh, unbuildable is, is, is one thing, but as John pointed out, where it's right next to the Cushing School, I think the whole issue of the town taking some of this property, this is a perfect example of property that the town might want to have years, and I have no idea why we'd, you know, but when you have, when you have a lot of land that abuts a, a school, a piece mm -hmm. of school property, it, it could be used for expanding a field or a as a matter of fact there I think it's still there they put in a uh, pathway right next to the football field right. on the back of my mm -hmm. land yeah. to, to let the children walk up to Cushing school because they were too close to take the bus okay I don't know if they still use that but but it's a good example where yeah. you know instead of having to take bus it might be even better for mm -hmm. safe routes to schools and, and pathways and, and so you know, yeah. anyway. Which, That's my whole point. Which begs, yeah. begs the question, I guess, uh, and we want to do, the, do whatever we can tonight to help you, of course. Uh, my question would be to Tricia, I guess, um, if the board desired, could they take this to the name of the town tonight? If, 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 uh, could we accept it? You if, mean? if, could we accept it in the name of the town if the owner yes, does Yes, as long as the conveyance and the donation is in agreement with the terms of the donator. So if mm -hmm. you just want to donate it to the town instead yes. of the Conservation Commission, it doesn't matter to then that is fine. I didn't you know can I accept it under that. Yep. So, so, sure. That would be the only restriction for somebody yeah, I was else donating. I was going to make the exact point. It's really up to the conveyor. Yeah. And I, I agree with John's point. And, but, you know, there, there are many people that will give give land to the town but you know they will say hey only to conservation fine and that's up to them right. so up to I was them. just gonna ask you what's your case so if you're yeah. mind, yeah. whatever my, my land is right there as he pointed out the school go for it and the football field so yep it's a you know it doesn't matter to me you want a motion please if there's no further discussion seeing Move the board of selectmen vote to accept a donation of land parcel number 32-1-14-f-r McDermott on behalf of the town of Situate period second uh, thank you discussion seeing none all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. thank you thank you very you. much thank, thank you very much, much. Thank you very generous. Thinking of us.
Very generous of you. Very generous, and thank you. Uh, there's one more parcel. Correct. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to accept a donation of land, parcel number 21-3-2-0R, Laverty, on behalf of the Town of Situate? Are we going to discuss it or just? No nope. discussion. Well, he's got a motion. Does need needs well, to be a second before discuss, just to be all right. Since everybody's watching. Need a second. Days. Second for discussion. All right. Now, thank you, Sean. Now discuss it, Rick or anybody. Yeah, just yeah. to understand where, where it is. If we can just look at the map and. I think if you go, if you're traveling north on um, Hatherley Road, as soon as you bend the bend from um, Eli, there's all that. It's almost like you can see. It's like a causeway. You can see the uh, earthen work of Musquashka Pond. Right. Oops, Musquashka Pond. Those are the lots. It's like 53,000 square feet. And then um, what would have been known as the um, snackery, Sean, is that where the snackery was on the other side? So for all intents and purposes, this is all water. There's so on this map, really what, what one's on the map is it? I think it's from it's the... Um, A and B? And I think it's... Hang on, where's it? My understand. I, I think it's, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, isn't it? Yes. It's all, all those, all those all lots. lots. You can see them. It's all marked. Um, yeah. Right. Just beyond the old houseboat. Right. It's by the snackery. So where's Eli at? On back. If, yeah. It would back be back. Yes, yeah. So um, my feelings on this one is uh, actually don't support the deletion of the Conservation Commission from this because we have a letter from their attorney that says back in two, 2012 uh, I had written about the possibility of donating the above captioned parcel to the town for it says conversation purposes but I assume that's a typo and they mean conservation purposes so that's a typo on their letter not us um, so here I mean, unless we hear otherwise from the audience, from the donor, it seems like they do want conservation. So, but I'm fine with holding off on this, seeking clarification, because if they don't care, I'm fine either way. But if they do want it, and this is five acres right next to Musquashicut, so it's probably not gonna happen anyways, but it makes more sense to me for conservation because that is a regulated state um, great pond. And so there might be conservation reasons, there might be reasons why we would want it to be conservation, but regardless of that, I'm not worried about it getting built because it's all wetland anyways. But I think we, s we should seek clarification from the potential donor. Are they doing it only for conservation or not? Two thoughts on that. I, I would agree if they want to do that. Ask Attorney Brooks if that's what the uh, Laverties want to do, number one. Number two, you're not going to be able to build on it. I so agree. whether you give it to the town or you give it to conservation, I think it's it's a moot point. The only exception is is that you know there was a concept with different people who were talking about um, bike paths connecting uh, Gannett all the way down to uh, Jericho at some point, and there may be a portion of this that could be used for a bike path. But if you put a conservation restriction on it, then that's going to be a major issue. So I'm I'm just saying if there's a potential for linkage in the future, not this year, not next year, but 10 or 15 years down the road then we're going to be hamstringing ourselves with the possibility of not being able to build on that side of the road, which means you have to go on the other side of the road, which could alter the whole location of the bike right. path. My whole point is, if they're willing to donate it to the town, I don't think it's going to make a difference whether it's ComCom or, or the town, because we're never going to be able to build a house on it. I agree. I, just, I only say for future purposes of other uses that could be used, and I'd, I'd rather see it go to the town for... So I would, I would check with the owner. And even if they do say, if, the, if let's say they come back and say, no, we want it for conservation, I think we should engage them and say, um, you know, would you be happy with a, with a conservation restriction, um, not just the whole thing going into conservation, and, you know, you potentially mention um, something like a path. Because oftentimes owners don't really understand the process, and they might think, hey, I just want to make sure a house doesn't get built. They might not know it's not regulated or whatever. Or an easement. So they might, or an easement. Put an easement an on it. An easement or something like that. Yeah. But I would just check with the owners. Um, Tony. Just to play devil's advocate, why do we want this property? They can't build on it. It's all wet. We get taxes on it now. Why, why are we? Why do we want it at all? Maybe we, we, we want, want, maybe we want to put a path on there sometime. 
Well, if you put a path there, it's going to be along the whole stretch of the land, and we're going to have whatever whatever area the town has access to, just like we did on Gannett. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what the tax... It doesn't seem like it's a ton of tax dollars, but I can't tell if this is just one of the lots. It looks like $70 a quarter for... I just can't figure it out. I don't think I have all the sheets here. But I don't... Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I, one, all my comments were predicated on assuming, and I didn't cry. Yeah. I didn't question that assumption. So that's a good question to ask. I think I, that gets us into the policy of saying, you know, mm -hmm. why take property if we're taking it off the tax rolls, even though it's a small amount of money, unless unless we have a policy as to is it going to further enhance the water quality, or if it's going to be better right. for open space, or or, or for uh, long term vision as to what we're going to use it for. And I think you're right, Tony. That's a good okay. question. Well, I think. There are two things that we need when we discuss these things is what is the tax dollars that we're we're talking about and I don't think we have a good grip on this property as to what we're going to be taking off the dole and on this property not mm -hmm. much at all hundreds of dollars per year not much yeah I mean right. that's just a number we should know we should say it is it's idea. 418 dollars or whatever it happens to be I didn't see it and then $78 how much is it $78 Seventy-eight dollars a year for each parcel yep in the property card. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a quarter, though. If I look at this one, it's eighty-two dollars a quarter. Is that what that is for this one property? Yeah, that shows the interest because it was an area. So I think it's seventy-eight twenty. Well, we should understand no, understand what that is. I think this one actually may have some. Some good bearing though, because it's right up against Musquashka Pond, and it may be something that we need to restore that pond back to its its yeah. health at some point. I'm just saying, if it's non bindle though, it's not attached to anything we're really looking at. So we need we should get it. If I if I may to summarize so far, I would like clarification from the owner whether they want they do mean conservation or not. Would they be happy with a easement, as John says, or some wording like that? I would also like. And this is to sort of presage the uh, policy, but I would be very interested in, in this piece of land. Uh, is any of it upland enough to be build, built? I'm pretty darn sure the answer to that's going to be wouldn't, no. Wouldn't be coming but else. I would just like that to be documented, it's just so we can make an informed decision. And then sort of a, a financial bottom line, even though it's a small number, but just actually to get it the total for those. I mean, we should be able to list at least two points why we want the property. Yeah, you know? that's fine. Why don't we do this? Get out next time. Just a suggestion. Why do, we, do, do you want to postpone action on this and ask the town administrators to put together a policy uh, as she can? And then, depending upon that policy, we will also have asked uh, the owners if they want conservation or not. And if they insist on conservation, then we'll just go ahead and do it. If they don't, we'll let the policy decide on what we're going to do. Right. And I, we got to remember John's point that he brought up is a very good one. If you get it not in conservation, it's always a chip for you to use yep. when you may want to transfer other land out of conservation mm -hmm. and you can put this property right. in conservation. So, you know, that may alone be enough of a reason to do it if right. you can get it into that condition. Right. So is that a plan? Just sure. getting, sure. just, just getting, like Rick said, just getting an answer from the the owners it seems to me like it's a burden to them they probably f lose the bill and it gets in the rears next thing you know it's it's in here that we couldn't take it because it was fifteen dollars owed or something so now it's current just find out how they want to give it to us and take it then make this policy yeah. and i agree yeah. with the policy yeah. Yeah. And there's got to be value because it abuts like tony said in, in rick this is your department because it abuts mm -hmm. you know whether it's salt or brackish or do we open <laughs> the gates or not maybe we can build new gates there so. <laughs> so it's got to be a value. Let's just okay. Yeah. That uh, everyone on the same page. Good. So that takes care of fifteen. Do we want a motion to, on the second piece to uh, postpone action on that? Move to postpone action to the next meeting. Second. To a future meeting. Future meeting. You don't want to wait too long because these. Had uh, I'll move to withdraw my motion, um, and um, so I need a second on that, don't second. I? Second. All right. Well, and then Tony's motion. All in favor. All favor. Oh, Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 
I move that we uh, postpone this to a future meeting. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, 16, discussion vote. Steering committee for the uh, building master plan. An important item. Trisha. Um, you have in your packet a memo for me uh, with a proposed charge to create a public facilities master plan steering committee after we met with all the stakeholders on June 18th and received that feedback. Um, with the pro and in addition to the appropriations we approved at the April town meeting, we're sort of in a position now where we need to move forward in a more strategic and uh, concrete manner to start to uh, make some progress on the public facilities master plan. So to that end, I'm proposing or recommending to the board <coughs> that we create a public facilities master plan steering committee. I've uh, given the board a proposed charge for that committee and the makeup of that committee, and I'll just briefly read uh, two paragraphs regarding the charge. The Public Facilities Master Plan Steering Committee is created in an effort to ensure all stakeholders in this major development redevelopment process have a venue in which to provide input before, input before any decisions are finalized by town officials. The committee is solely advisory in its capacity and in no way shall supersede or take the place of the Board of Selectmen and School Committee to determine ultimate courses of action. It is expressly understood that the Situate Public Building Commission and any building committees required by the Commonwealth's Massachusetts School Building Authority will have primary jurisdiction over any approved building and construction mm -hmm. project. The steering committee shall provide input and suggestions for recommended uses for a variety of current and foreseeable community, civic, and municipal activities and operations. The purpose of the committee is not to revisit decisions once made by officials about, about public facilities, but to work with the various entities to bring any approved plan to fruition and be reflected of the needs of all affected constituent groups. The committee shall serve as an information resource for residents and constituent groups about the progress of public facility plans. Thank you. Uh, you've given, in your memo to us, uh, you have suggested uh, not to exceed 15 members, just, you know, uh, two members of the school committee, two members of the Council on Aging, uh, one member of the Library Board of Trustees, one member appointed by the Recreation Commission, uh, one member appointed at large from the general public. And then also you suggest, uh, or it says the board shall include a member of the Economic Development Commission and Planning Board. Uh, of the eight we appoint. Of the, the board has eight. eight, eight of the member of the town yeah. business community will also be appointed. Uh, so that's about I guess I'd like to just suggest that we increase the number of citizens to more than one. I'd just like to make that. This purpose yep. is a proposal for the board's so uh, approval be. so it can change. That is what the eight are. We can appoint any of the eight. Of the eight, yep. only, so we, we th only three are economic development, uh, business community, and planning board. Okay. So there'll be five other appointments from the board. Which could go anywhere. anywhere. Which would be for the most. Would go to the public, I'm sure. I mean, most likely. Plus, I mean, there are people in the public who are working hard on this issue yeah. who may be not falling into any of these categories. I'm not right. sure they're included. Sure. Um, all right, two questions. I see the school committee has two two members, which makes sense considering that uh, a, th a little more than a third, or probably more like um, not half, less than half, would be like a middle school or something. Uh, why is, I'm just curious, why do we have two members from the Council on Aging? I, I mean, it seems a little disproportionate, that's all. I mean, they need a vote, I totally agree with it, but I just don't understand, you know, why we're looking to put two as opposed to two from recreation, or why the police and the fire aren't on it, because we're going to be talking about a fire station, a police station, uh, that's all. I, and I realize it's a hot button issue, but my attitude is, I think it's disproportionate. I, I mean, I don't really care, frankly, but I just, I'm just I, asking. I have no ownership in how I did it, so it's up to the board. I mean, it's up to 15. We can put as many as you want. As many in who we want, for that matter. And you can add or but reduce the size, too. I mean, I just think that, you know, certainly the school definitely should have a minimum of two because they're going to have a, a huge input on it. And I 
just think it's disproportionate. I, I don't take it the wrong way. Council on Aging, the senior center is a very important aspect of it, but I just don't want to mm -hmm. start out of the gate with a disproportionate number. That's that's my position. I think there should only be one. We can decide that. It's up to everybody else on the board. Rick Murray? Uh, I agree with that suggestion. Um, so I am just doing my, my accounting here, and I know we just did it, but I'm a little slow tonight, folks. Eight from eight appoint eight members appointed by BOS plus just as the suggestion two from school two from aging which we've I agree with Mr. Dennehy but just for the sake one from library one from rec one from general public so that's eight and two is ten and two is twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and I understand it's just the model but how would that general public person be appointed from us by us yeah. yeah so we would make that appointment and of our initial in this accounting of those eight one is EDC, one is planning board. That is and one is business. Oh, thank you, Tony. All right. Again, this Yeah, so be. it's just a model. And I just want yeah. to make sure I was, before I start to play with the model, I want to make sure I understood the model. So, um, you know, I, I, I think Mr. Dan, he raises a very salient point uh, in the spirit. And again, don't, I don't want to start getting piles of phone calls and emails from a particular constituency on this. But I think <coughs> in, the, um, in the spirit of, of um, keeping things level amongst potentially interested constituencies. You know, I think one from aging, one from library, one from rec, and then, you know, increase the BOS number to nine. And I also um, point out that just because there's someone on there from the rec doesn't mean that other people also aren't interested in rec, or just because there might be only one person there from the Council on Aging doesn't mean that many of the other people wouldn't be interested in aging issues as well. Um, so, you know, we're not we're not playing games like that, but we're just trying to get you know interested boards in equal representation. One area that With I the exception of schools. Go ahead. One one area I was thinking of is maybe commission on disabilities. You're going to be dealing with facilities. You need to make sure you have access. And I'm like, you know, public, to me that would make public buildings full. Sorry to interrupt. But public, public buildings. buildings. Well, they're a liaison. So anyway, I, that's that's my whole point of saying you know just instead of giving it. That's a great one. Again, it's this. I. I to reiterate, you just did the framework. I, um, yeah, I don't see this as a board of committees where planning board members are appointing their own members to this. It's trying to involve the community yeah, right. in getting the word out and being informed of the progress um, all the time. So, you know, so I'd hate to see, you know, the planning board have a planning board member and rec have a rec member and council on aging. It's people that they are appointing to be able to be the conduit for information. And I, and I want to make sure, and I think it's outlined pretty well in, in your suggestion that, that uh, you know, we sometimes we get, uh, we have a tendency, I guess, to, to appoint just boards to, just uh, right. board members to uh, committees, and it's just an, almost a natural thing to do, but I want to make sure that we get, this is a big project that's going to affect the public, all the public, in a lot of ways, both educationally, financially. Uh, and I want to make sure the public's well included in this. That's the intent. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, a couple. I agree with John 100% that someone from public safety should be on there. I mean, they have one of the yeah. one of the um, buildings that we're discussing, um, and I don't expect any of us to be on it. You know, I think, I agree. like Joe said, we're going to be involved in the process. The school committee is going to be involved in the process wholeheartedly. This is other people that they know that are active that will be involved. If I did the math right, it looks like of the 15 people, there's one from EDC, one from planning, one from business, two from school, one from council on aging or seniors, one library, one rec, and one from public safety. And I like the one from disabilities too. Mm -hmm. um, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then there would be five other people at large at large that we would appoint. Mm -hmm. You guys feel comfortable with that setup and then you have two liaisons one from public buildings and one from uh, the facilities manager I think that right. makes sense that makes sense yeah. and I guess we would just go out to the general public and have people apply yep. and then they would we'd send a letter to the chairs to those committees who have an appointment and then the general public would advertise and then bring them back to the board and, and hopefully the news uh, newspapers would pick up on our request to put a, a maybe a blurb in the mariner that we're looking for people for this committee thank you 
what I'll do is pending the board's vote is I'll uh, amend with the changes that you've made and then I can send it out to the media outlets tomorrow okay. so I move the board select and vote to endorse the revised proposed charge for the public facilities master plan steering committee so I added the word revised to reflect this conversation okay uh, motion been made looking for a second second I hear the second from Sean all in favor aye aye, aye. Okay. opposed any discussion I'm sorry any further discussion go ahead Frank I yeah, didn't mean to take a someone from the, um, the Friends of Citrix Future to be included in that steering committee. We're a group of organized citizens that are looking to advocate for the replacement or improvement of the Gates schools. I think we represent a lot of the representation of the town. So I think it'd be helpful if we could be in that room or come here and have a discussion. I think that was probably my intention when I wanted to make sure the public was involved. I had you people in mind. So, But if the board feels they want to include that as well. Well, I think, I don't think it is a charge, but certainly the school committee could put you or one of the f five appointments that we have would could be one or two or however many of your members you know are, are active and, and want to be involved in it yeah I think would be sufficient yeah yeah so. uh, just my personal feeling yes I'm uncomfortable mentioning your organization by name because I don't want to start getting then we're going to get other potentially other civic organizations we might have friends of this friends of that but certainly in terms of the spirit and mm -hmm. also in terms of being in the room these are all open public meetings and uh, you know any anybody will be able to speak and have their comments recorded and so on and so forth but in terms of spirit absolutely but I'm not comfortable mentioning the organization by name Further? Um, thank you did we vote on that did we vote no we didn't okay uh, we, do we have a motion we did yep. your motion and we had a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Uh, yes, we did vote on it. Then, then I went into We voted on it. And then I. Um, yeah, I think we after did. After discussion, <laughs> after. <laughs> no. Then we went to discussion. <laughs> Okay, to things it's 9.30, hey. It's 9.30. We did yeah. vote on it. Well, either way, we definitely vote. We, vote, we, we double just vote, voted on it. We double anyways. voted on it. There you it. go. Uh, 17, discussion votes, set special town meeting date and uh, preliminary review of articles. Sure. Um, it's that time of year we have to set it, the date for the special town meeting. This year was particularly, particularly difficult in finding dates. Typically, we like to have it in October. There's a number of reasons that uh, we have to sort of fit the town meeting into an, a narrow timetable because we need to set the tax rate in November and that is predicated on the assessors coming to you for the tax classification hearing and then calculating the bills and getting them all out by December that uh, dictates our cash flow for the entire year so we want to make sure we get those tax bills out on time they can't begin that process until all expenditures and budgets are finalized for the fiscal year, which can't happen until after you have a special town meeting because you're moving around appropriations. So the proposed date is not even in the one I gave you on the packet Friday because it's changed yet again. Um, the date is Tuesday, November 13th. I'll explain uh, the rationale behind that. Uh, the last two weeks in October, the town moderator is not available. He serves as town council to another community, and they have already scheduled their town meeting for the week of the 22nd, and that usually goes two, sometimes three nights. The week after that, the week of the 29th, is the week before the every four-year presidential election, and the town clerk um, office is very busy, particularly um, doing absentee ballots, registration, and preparation. The week of the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th, obviously the presidential election is the 6th, so the town clerk has to certify all that and report to the Secretary of State. So the week after that is um, Veterans Day on Sunday the 11th, which means the offices are closed on Monday. Um, the 14th and the 15th don't work. That was in my original memo to you, but in rechecking with the town clerk again today, we have to have a voter registration for the special town meeting on the 10th day before the actual date of the meeting. 
If it's the 15th, that's November 5th, which is the night before the presidential election. If it's the 14th, that's on a Saturday. So the best date is the 13th, 10 days back is Friday the 5th, I mean Friday the 2nd, mm -hmm. which would mean a warrant has to be posted on October 29th, giving you only really two meetings coming up to finalize a warrant. So that was the rationale behind it. I realize it's not the best date. It's later than I would like it. Um, but that's what's being proposed for you to set the date uh, for Nove Tuesday, November 13th. Okay. Uh, motion. Discussion first and then a motion, or motion and discussion, either way. Pretty clear, I guess. Makes yeah. sense. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to set a date for the special town meeting as Tuesday, November 13th. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The second part of this is you have a tentative listing of warrant articles I'm already carrying subject to official notice going out to solicit um, any potential articles given the, what the board just voted. I met uh, with Mark Sandon last week to talk with about him tentatively. He's here tonight. Um, some of those though, especially the ones that are T TBDs to be determined, I just need to get a general sense of the board tonight. If you will want me, if you're thinking of considering it for this fall town meeting warrant, it would be helpful to me so I can get do the due diligence and get more information so you have it for your next meeting. Um, library project, what is that? That would be the tentative funding for it. <coughs> that would be our. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Again, this I, is I, I think that's that's when we send the notice out. I'm just saying that that's a possible one we might get for back from the board. Um, that's all. So it's not 100 percent. Okay. The meals tax again. That's another one that we're talking big picture. But I don't know mm -hmm. if it may be a little early. Again, I, I tend to think it's more ripe for an annual town meeting than a special. It's right. a big discussion. I think so, too. Yeah, my, my sense on some of the stuff is that they're better off for an annual. I like reserving the, the specials for financial things that absolutely have to be done for whatever accounting calendars are necessary and um, anything and everything else put out, put out to the annual just for attendance reasons and planning reasons. There are some other things in here that to me seem to require a um, the annual like some of those other things with big numbers on them for example various feasibility studies and so on they're listed some of it a little bit time sensitive in that you know we want to oh, get it's time sensitive absolutely keep yeah. things moving I don't want to you know That's what I, I don't mean. want to slow anything down Electric. either but you know if it's a those last two you know yep but meals tax you know, how is the library project going to fit into the to the grand plan? Mm -hmm. I mean, that that needs to be. You know, we were just talking about this committee we put up. Yep. We just started, which I isn't, agree. Even, which I isn't agree. even impaneled yet, right? So we have this 15-member board that we just started that we don't even have anybody in place for. And are we expecting by the special to be able to comment on a potential library or any other mm -hmm. um, potential interfering with our grand plan? So that's the sort of stuff I personally prefer putting off to the annual. Um. And not just this year, but in general for future years as well. Yeah, and this is just the list yeah, I just carry a list. all year. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so we'll schedule this. Uh, the notice will go out and uh, we'll have it on the next two agendas um, to, to flesh them out even more so the board will have to vote in its first meeting on October probably. Good. Okay. Mark, I don't know if Mark had anything. Okay, uh, I don't think there's a, there's no motion necessary there, I don't believe, is there? Uh, do we have to, you already set the date, so yep. it's done. All right, uh, no motion necessary, we'll move to number 18, that's the appointments. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint Peter Struziero to the Cable Television Committee. Second. 
Motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the Board of Select and vote to appoint Mark Kern to the Water Resource Committee. Second. Motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Treasurer Collector. Move the Board of Select and vote to appoint Pamela J. Abitabli to the position of Treasurer Collector pending successful salary negotiations. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Tony? Yeah, I just wanted to discuss it for a second. I, I think, you know, they both were very uh, competent and very, um, you know, starting to get their experience through the process. I, I think I was a little disappointed that, that they weren't more experienced. And they can't, obviously they can't help it. I like the fact that they were both going down that path of getting educated and taking the classes and, and going down that step. I just think that we're, we're putting ourselves in a situation where we have, as we all know, you know, someone less experienced than we've had in the past. And that's a bit of a concern to me. Um, I think, um, um, I think I, I like your choice. Um, I think of the two, they were very close, but I think she stood out a little bit more for me in, in some of the stuff she'd done historically. Um, I do like, I guess the, the fact is that there is a probationary period of is it six, six months? months so there's a six month probationary period so if we, f if we find that the level of experience just isn't enough for what the town needs and i don't mean to go i know they're both watching right now or uh, you know i don't i'm not trying to go down a negative path i'm just trying to be conservative here i guess we do have a recourse if we find that it that the town really just needs someone more experienced i know that you've gone through the process you've looked at 100 resumes and right now the pool of applicants is what it is um and you know we've looked at, at quite a few of them so um no, i support your motion but i those are my concerns and i think we should look at it closely over the first six months and make sure that they're on track with what the town needs yeah i, I just wanted to the, you know i'm looking at both um trying to gauge who would be in better position you know it's it's difficult sometimes um and um i thought uh, ms avatabli you know, personality was nice. We need to make sure, not that the other uh, woman wasn't, just that um, they're both similar as far as their experience goes, as far as um, um, as, as much experience for municipal government, um, similar. Um, I just feel like, you know, the one thing I, I, I kind of quizzed her a few things that I wanted to find out. I like the way she rebounded and saying, well, if you're not a double A, triple A, <laughs> we will soon be, which is the attitude I'd like. I like the fact that, you know, the hours are the hours. We're not going to have any issues about, well, I want to work less or I want to work more. I mean, the difficulty this board has faced is that our past treasurer collector had years of experience. She moved on to a better position, another position in another town. Um, and, um, you know, it's been difficult. The last person we interviewed, um, you know, for what it's worth, um, didn't suit my, my likings, the fact that he had another business on the side. This person, uh, at least both these applicants, are going to be doing this job full time. And, um, you know, if it's the wrong decision, you're absolutely right. You know, we'll have an opportunity during probation period to determine or ascertain whether or not she's capable of doing it. And if not, then we'll have to uh, move on to another person. But I just think um, between the two, my reason for selecting is I, I thought um, she handled some of the questioning. Um, and time will only tell whether we're right. I hope we are. So I just wanted to just explain my reason for, for nominating her as the um, treasurer collector. Thanks. I think. Uh I, I, I was, uh, I was uh, impressed by both candidates, obviously, but I think uh, I was more impressed in the fact that that Pamela uh, came recommended by both the town administrator and the town accountant, uh, the people that, that the treasurer will actually be working with most, uh, and, and that's so important. Maybe more important than anything else is that the, the ability of, of the, uh, of the accountant and the town administrator to have confidence in the treasurer also both candidates met with the uh, staff of the treasurer's office i spoke to the st staff of the treasurer's office uh again they, they they had nothing but good things to say about both candidates however they did say they they, they uh seemed to prefer uh pamela uh, so that weighed heavily on my vote so i will vote yes for pamela evitably Work for us. That's fine. No, and we need a vote motion. Uh, no, we I, made yeah, a motion. I just, yeah, and we're in discussion, right? Yep. yep. So, um, yeah, I agree with the motion. I'll vote in favor of it. Um, both of them have less experience than our most recent predecessors. 
they like Pamela seem to have a little more experience and a couple more towns, a little more municipal experience than than the other candidate. And that's why I'm, and I'm not just saying this very close uh, candidates. They both bring different strengths, but Pamela a little more municipal experience. She's been the assistant treasurer at Duxbury. Duxbury is a very well-run town. It's a coastal community. She knows about beach stickers, you know, that sort of thing. And that the culture of a town, I think, is also very important. Although our town administrator came from the came from the hills she certainly learned quite well of what a coastal community is like but um, I, I do think that's a that's one of the benefits that Pamela brings to this position uh, okay we've had a motion we've had a second <laughs> is that correct yep uh, all in favor of uh, Pamela Avatabli please signify by saying yes I I whatever yes I yes I, I. Yes, I. The vote All is the above. five to nothing. It's unanimous. The town administrator pending negotiations. Correct. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We'll talk to the candidates tomorrow, and we congratulate both candidates. And we welcome panel board. Hopefully. Um, next. 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 Town administrator. Report of the town administrator, including a. <coughs> vote on a policy regarding communications. Uh, the first item in my report of the two is just to bring to the board's attention the plethora of uh, events that the town is hosting uh, June, July, August, September, and October. Uh, that is, we've had a number of brand new first time events this year. The policy is that if they're returning, with the exception of Heritage Days, the duathlon and the KFC Carnival, um, I can approve them. <coughs> brand new ones come to the board. Um, we have a brand new request for a very large event uh, in North Situate. I have asked Sergeant Gil Martin last month not to meet with anybody else to plan events until I brought to the board's attention the fact that our community every single weekend has one, sometimes two events and those to some extent create traffic disruptions um, and so I before we go any further on planning this October event I informed the organizer that the board really had to seriously look at the number of events we've already approved so um, those were my concerns and um, I think I included the application for the new event so. comments from the board Full speed ahead, absolutely necessary. We're getting ad hoc, to, ad hoc all over the place on these things, and we have to bring some structure to it, just like we have with the uh, the cart vendors and all this sort of stuff. So I really, this is good. I agree. There seems to be one every day, and and a lot of them don't aren't related to situate at all. So you know they're using our streets and our infrastructure. Yep. Um, now on the one that we have here. Do we want to discuss this one? Again, it's like the land donation. If someone trips the discussion, does that mean they get penalized? So that's why I brought it to the board. I mean, this looks like a, a fun family event for Situate people in an area that really doesn't take a lot of events up in North Situate. Is, it, is this the chamber event? Who's putting? Yeah, yeah so I'm going to recuse myself on this yeah. discussion as I'm a board member of the Chamber of Commerce. So right. I'll let you guys discuss this. So it's. You know, it's a little bit different than running a 10K race and closing streets and all this sort of stuff. It's it's a, a a fall festival is what they're suggesting. A family atmosphere with pony rides, pumpkin carvings, music, chowder fest, blah, 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 um, in the fall. So I would, uh, sounds interesting to me. I'd bring my kids, so. I think it's a little different than them blocking right, streets sure. and doing all that sort of stuff. Why we talk about it here? Thank you so much. I, I don't think, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> that's what happens a lot. You know, events go on and they don't come down and say, 
a race is coming down your street, you know, that that should be part of the process that we figure out what is the time period between discussion and approval. You know, a lot of times we do it all in one night and don't give the general public the, the chance to come in and, and speak in. Is it a chamber event? I mean, do we know? It is. It is a chamber it's event. A chamber it's a event. chamber event. And I'm a member of the chamber. I know nothing. I'm confused. I thought we were talking about Trisha's report. Now we're talking about well, this is it's part of it. Yeah, it's I know, I know that. But shouldn't this be by itself, like every other one? And I agree with Tony. I think it's a great idea, and oh. I see where Ian's coming from a little. But well, well part of the problem with this is this came in last week, and it's in two weeks. You know, it's it's next month. I mean, that that's the whole issue well, about the fact that either you have to stop taking new events. Because we get it, and then all the departments, it goes to seven departments. We had to verbally walk this around so it could get into your packet in order to get an approval tonight. Is that why we drew, is that why 10 withdrew? Was another one a general? No, no, no that was for a, a different a reason, reason altogether. All right. yeah, yeah, no, and like I said, I don't have a problem voting it if it's if we can vote it tonight. And sometimes t it's critical I, that no, we I do it. I don't think we can vote it tonight because it's not on the agenda. So, but I think why don't we we can discuss it and get it out there and let the general public know that there's a thought of this, and can go to the chamber meeting and learn more about it, and then maybe we can put it on the agenda for our next meeting. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I put it under my report to raise the issue of I would really like the board. Again, the board's only approving brand new events. I approve general events. Is to be able to say we're not approving after whatever the disposition of this is. We just can't entertain any new ones for these periods given the schedule that we've already approved for and mostly like you said Tony situate organizations we want to give preference to yeah I'd like to, it, this is kind of a big deal closing down it, I think it means closing down not situate I think it's just going in front of the people. WPA building or just in the tennis thousand court. people though I mean I, I'm well that's what they predict yeah. Thousands. Thousands. Yeah. A thousand yeah one a thousand, thousand. over the course of a day May I ask a question, please? Of course. Thank you. Anne Burbine, Penny Crystal. The email that I got said that there would be some type of event sometime in October. And it was new to me. I have no clue what it would be. Um, I would presume from what you're saying it would be in front of the WPA building. Part of the email said there would be uh, Chowder Fest and yep. vendors and and what have you, but no one has. You know, I'm on the I'm the treasurer of the North Central Merchants Association, and I have a checkbook. But nobody's uh, nobody's come and said, "Gee, what is the date that you have?" It's October 13th. Well, don't they usually run? Isn't there usually some sort of fall thing in there? October there has Fest? been an Oktoberfest in years past. And By the chamber? It, well, we've, the North Situate merchants have tried to do it. You know, the reality in North Situate is I could count on it. There are maybe 10 actual retailers of 70 businesses. Everything else is basically service. There are very, very few retailers up there. Very few. Notwithstanding whether I agree with Ms. Burbine or not, um, I don't think we can vote this tonight. It's not an agenda item. And it sounds to me like it's a very nice affair, but sort of lack of planning on their part. I, I don't like being put under the gun. You know, it's like this just came in last week. Town hall staff worked, their, worked very hard to, to walk it through and get approvals and so on. I don't like being pressured just because of the calendar. I mean, if this is such a large event, they should have been planning it a little ahead of time and giving it to us two weeks ago and put out public no a little more public notice. So I'm, I'm, I'm all in favor of, of this event, you know, in theory, but bring it up in two weeks. Okay. Why don't we, That's my why, why don't we refer to it? That's fine. We can put on the agenda. Um, the I next. guess I need some just general feedback about sort of trying to... Well, I think your policy is a, is a good idea. One of the things I'd like to see as a policy is a hard deadline such that, because there's been some other um, 
events that we've approved and then they come back with modifications and modifications and modifications again a completely worthy event that I that this board entirely supported you know a, across the whole spectrum but but this new policy has got to have like a real deadline that seeks approval by two months ahead of time three months ahead of time whatever it might be um, maybe that's a scalable thing as a function of estimated size but I wouldn't go down that route because everybody's gonna say it's smaller than it's gonna end up being because they want a shorter turnaround time but you know a real deadline and then some content about the scale of potential revisions because some of these revisions that have been coming in have been have been almost of the same scale of the whole event itself moving the location moving the date so it's like almost a whole new reapplication so when we're talking about the policy I'd like a hard deadline and this deadline you know this is this is one month away what's today the fourth something like that and the 13th is plus or minus a month and that's just not that's just that's just not fast enough in my personal view well we don't decide that we put it on the next agenda and if they can't if they can't if that's I not agree it's, it's not it's not our it's not our issue we want to I don't think I want a unilateral saying no more new events I think what we have to do is coordinate it with a calendar. Like we can't say there may be nothing in December. So if somebody wants to do something on December third, I don't want to say right now no one can do anything else. But when you look at the past months, you know, there's no room for anything else in August. They're just so that's got to be incorporated. Yeah, yeah. In, you know. Okay. I think in general we agree that we're booking up to our capacity of events. These are all good things, but we, we, we have to manage these good things. Manage the goodness. Okay. Uh, the second item, Mr. Chair, in order for there to be no more future confusion or ambiguity. Uh, Mr. Danny, you can be back for this, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay. John. Thanks, Board Anne. Communications, in light of its review of the open meeting law guidelines, um, I would recommend that the Board approve the following policy. That the chairman of the board of selectmen and the town administrator are authorized to respond to and communicate with residents, businesses, and or media on behalf of the board as necessary or warranted. That yeah, makes sense. I. Yeah. So what's um, this about? Well, we can't. It's it's it has to do with the open meeting law in terms of responding to simple requests about. People send an email and say, I want a dumpster moved. And if we send an email out to all of us and we all respond, then that can be considered a violation of the open meeting law. So, you know, we're, we're authorizing the chair to make those decisions and the town administrator to say, yes, you can move that dumpster without all of us communicating on it. So you can't, you can't have an, electro an electronic forum of discussion. Oh yeah, no, I'm well aware yeah. of that. I just want so to make sure I knew where the context that's what, was because yeah. this is so this readily is obvious. matters of the board. Yeah. Um, the issue that Joe spoke to previously, and I think is, uh, I'm trying to remember since I've been here, only two letters that have gone out from the full board as opposed to the chair or whatever. Right. So this policy in talking with town council and a number of towns actually have it in place was because of timeliness issues that we ran into with the ledger and stuff like that that the chair would be authorized to respond and uh, for those kinds of matters but would not be unilateral. Absolutely, of course. This board, we get tons of letters all the time and it's our, my pleasure to be able to support <laughs> this motion. But that doesn't mean that the board doesn't have input on it. Okay. It's just, you know, we all get the email. We all email Joe and say, you know, yes, no. Right. Move the so. dumpster. <laughs> All right, move the board more move the chairman of the board of selectmen the town administrator I'm sorry move the board of selectmen vote that the chairman of the board of selectmen the town administrator are authorized to respond to and communicate with residents businesses and or the media on behalf of the board as necessary or warranted second just discussion so let me clarify this um, so if I get an email I'm going to respond it's not the town administrator is going to be respond but it's if it's a general inquiry of the board of selectmen then the chairman it, and or not and not or the chairman or I guess you could say individually or the chairman in conjunction with the town administrator will be responding correct okay no I have not I just want to clarify that that's fine okay uh, motion to accept that policy you get that in a second 
Do we get we got a motion and a second on that? Okay. Uh, all in favor of that, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Again, that's another step in our uh, our uh, willingness to, to, to have as much transparency as, as possibly can is to do everything uh, according to the open meeting law, as we endeavor to always do. Okay. Um, next. I don't have the agenda. Any other business? Other business? Other business. Uh, I would uh, let me just start out. I have it here, so I, I couldn't help noticing it was pointed out to me the letter in the in the Mariner, I guess it was last week, from a Kelly Rage of Harborview Road, uh, in her so very well put, in eloquent letter on the. Uh, town's response and the town's decisions over July 3rd. I don't know if anyone read it. I hope everyone did. I did. Uh, it, and I would like to, I would personally, or if the board wants it to go under over the board's signature, that's fine too, like to drop her a note just thanking her because she absolutely got it. Uh, a lot of the Boston media and other places didn't get it, but she got it. So I intend to either drop her a letter as an individual Selectman, or if the board would like to join me with that, that's fine. How old is she? She's a, I don't know, she's in grade? In 11th grade, I think. 11th grade, Sacred Heart School, yep. yep. So she's so uh, a bright... 15, 16, 15, she's a bright, yep. she got it. I mean, a lot of people, as I say, repeat myself, but a lot of people didn't get it. She did. Go ahead and sign my name with that, Joe, okay. if you like. That's fine. That's great. Yeah, we'll sign it up. Well. And that's a good example. Nope, I, think, I the, think we need to policy. vote on it. We have to I vote, vote on it. I vote that we uh, send a letter to this woman thanking her for a response. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That's all I have. Rick, go ahead. I, other, well, we have a couple motions we need to do. Any? Uh, and other business? Sure. Yeah, just, I just, just want to say that uh, this past weekend on uh, Sunday, the Citrus Beach Association had their annual Labor Day parade. And I suggested to people two weeks ago to go see it. And I obviously was there. And just a great event, great day. Uh, it really epitomizes the town, the the um, the character of the people. Um, it's just such a, a, a fun event, festive family event. And um, you know the police and the fire were, were participating in it. it. Great all the way around. And it just again. It's indicative of what this town has to promote, what it has to give, and uh, I just these events that go on, whether it's in the fall or in the spring or in the summer, you know, it, it, they're great events, and they're things that this town has to continue in order to keep its identity, whether it's down in Sand Hills or downtown on Front Street or North Situate. I, I strongly think that we as a board should support it, and this was one that the town has, and I commend the town for doing it. That's what I had to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Tony, why don't you make those motions? I apologize sure. for that. that go by. Um, the first one is to revote a DPW contract from July 10, 2012. Move the Board of Selectmen rescind the two votes taken at July 10, 2012 meeting regarding contract 12 HW 41 salt shed structure and 12 HW 45 gasoline fuel dispensing system. Second. Motion. Why? Why? What's going on? Why? Because uh, the board, when they approved these, signed the contract, and the contract had an effective date of July 10th. The contract is a housekeeping error. Should have said June 30th, 2012. And because it's two different fiscal years, you have to rescind and revote. That's the only change. So the effective date of July 10th should be June 30th. And that's why it's before you. So that's number two and three. So though. why don't I go right to number two? Move the board selectman vote. Wait, did we vote we on that? We didn't vote on it. We didn't vote on it. We got a second. Uh, motion, we have a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. It's unanimous. Uh, move the board selectman vote to award the contract for replacement of the salt shed contract 12 HW 41 to clear span fabric structures of Windsor, Connecticut for a total bid price of $71,169.98 with payment to be made at unit prices and or lump sum prices pending receipt of a certificate of insurance 
100% per performance and 100% labor and material bond. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. With the board selecting a vote to award a contract for the installation of a gasoline fuel dispenser at the highway garage contract 12-HW-45 to Northeast Petroleum Services and Supply Incorporated of Jamaica Plain Mass for a, bid, a total bid price of $59,887.78 with payment to be made at the unit prices and or lump sum prices pending receipt of a certificate of insurance. 100% performance and 100% labor and material bond. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm just going to abstain. I do a lot of business with them. Okay. <coughs> Four to zero, one abstention. Move the board select and vote to accept the regular session minutes for August 21st, 2012. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. And one Four more other business. Yep. Um, Sean and I went to a meeting last week, was it? Wednesday. I Wednesday I night. Uh, with all the uh, different beach associations and discuss the seawall situation and they're concerned about it we had a very candid and uh, I thought productive meeting um, and you know it's just uh, I know a couple of you guys went to the meeting prior to that so they've all they've gotten before all of us and talked to them about the conditions obviously seawalls are priority in the town but funding is as with everything uh, a concern and I think you know we had good conversations about it so that was that and I just elaborate a little ahead. bit on that. Trisha, are you aware of what these organizations have been doing? Um, Humrock, South Humrock, for example, and you know they're all broken up into their own groups and going around canvass canvassing the neighborhoods with these packages in the event there's a, a bad storm. Um, and, I, and I meant to bring it with me. They, they you know, had it and I took it with me and I didn't bring it. For example, who might have special needs, who's elderly, <coughs> uh, you know, do they have natural gas, are they aware, how, you know, just a lot of stuff that, you know, in, in a coastal community like this that would really come in handy. Um, they even ha went as far as having uh, a, a rugged placard that's, you know, on one side that said need help, the other side, you know, they're okay. Someone would put that in their window. They're really, um, Jennifer Sullivan was there and spoke at length with the chief. Um, you know, really being proactive in, in the event we have another, you know, uh, blizzard or, you know, no name storm. And I, I can't do it justice. I should have brought the material there, but it's late. What's it's the group late. that they're working with, too? The, um, Sands. There's yes, another, thank uh, you. yeah. Yep. But just, uh, staff has been, Jennifer particularly, and Chief Judge, um, and the CERT teams for, I mean, there's a lot of, good volunteer support in town around incidents. Very impressed with uh, their organization efforts and uh, amount of effort, you know. Every stuff. family, every home got a, a package, shall we mm. say, that you right. just described. It's great. It's great. Oh. Motion uh, to adjourn. Wait, adjourn. on a lighter oh. note, yeah. it's football season. <laughs> All right. This weekend, Friday night, I think the high school plays. Can you confirm that? No? Well, okay. <laughs> and all of the uh, young kids will be playing on the fields on Sundays and Saturdays, so go out and watch them and uh, root for the home team. Move the board select. Just one thing Sorry. as we're we going by. Quite all right. too hurried. Quite all right. And uh, soccer, too. And uh, uh, last Sunday, just as a note, there was truck day. I beat the trucks. So one day this. Touch the truck. Last Friday. Well, touch, a, touch a truck. Uh, out here on the front lawn, and all, you had to see it, the number of children and families, uh, literally hundreds of, of children who came up to touch the truck, get on the truck uh, with the operators uh, accompanying them. It was just fantastic. It was just something you wouldn't really believe would have that much participation until your town administrator was out there driving a backhoe. Uh, it was interesting. So. I it think that's where that building went. Move the board of selectmen vote to adjourn the meeting at approximately 10 p.m. following the signing of documents. Should there be such documents? Second to sign. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Good night, folks. That's at the top of our land. Oh, no, I, I started reading it today. Oh.
Um, a land, oh, yeah. land caster? Yeah. See the top of our landfill? Shaved on our stuff. That's what it's going to look like. Well, it's good. Uh, I don't know what's going on. 500 kilowatt to you. Uh, talk to Greg Morris. He's actually trying to spearhead yeah, a um, Oktoberfest, the no, same event that had been basically um, um, killed, killed because of the train. The, the and the whole point was to make it happen. Yeah, for the, for the master plan committee. People up back to North Citrate. Yeah. Uh, the main reason that it was yeah. done yeah. for years to maybe incorporate a uh, chowder fest. Anybody. And, uh, something that would be nice. Okay. 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 Good job. Right. Ten o'clock. Yeah. Let me go to Quiet, buddy. Uh, secretary or the assistant, the yeah. administrative yeah. assistant for the uh, chamber. No, she's the one from uh, Duxbury. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Probably.